I think Leia thinks we're live now, and it probably is, but I'm going to wait for some confirmation before I actually press that button for the intro and stuff. <clears throat> in the meantime, just as a note, I was telling Jason earlier that I got some allergy or something that's thinning out my throat to today, so it's going to be fun as we keep going, I'm sure. Make him do the craziest voices possible. <clears throat> oh, that might help. If it's like phlegmy, it might loosen something up. That would be cool. Hey, everybody. Oh, hey, <laughs> looks like we're live. Let me um, hey. let me go hit a button and stuff. All right, here we go. adventures from the stream we are live and we are getting back into our dungeons and dragons fifth edition game of courageous and uh, we have a group of splendid folk here with me i'd like them to say hi let's start with the uh the other guy up there hey this is captain stubing and welcome to the love boat the Just love chris boat. playing all set alakin gnome warlock of wonder Excellent. I am Aster. I'll be playing Alistair Ashworthy, the Halfling Paladin. Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm Randy, and I'll be playing <coughs> Tusk, the uh, barbarian uh, half orc who uh, isn't going to appreciate his new deckhand job that he has. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, neither no do I. No one, no one gets it. But anyways, I'm Jason. I'll be playing the fabulous tiefling sorcerer Marty Shimmerwick. And I am Joe. I'm the dungeon master for this campaign that we are currently playing. We're going to do a little recap of where we were last time, brought to you by the fabulous Aster. Yay! We're on a boat! <laughs> Who was unaware of this assignment before this We're moment. on a boat. Uh, That's we're true. moving up. <laughs> We're on a boat. We're no, we're we're on the boat. We're getting ready for the boat to move because we tried to get it cheaper, and they were like, "Ah, no." The, well, they did. You did convince uh, a hundred gold cheaper. Yeah, yeah, eight hundred down to seven hundred. Not so bad. I would also like to point out that I got confused last time, and I realized my mistake at like two o'clock in the morning. I was like, <laughs> "Oh, oh, he didn't mean eight hundred gold each. He meant." Just 800, 800 gold, yeah. which between four people, so. Doesn't mean we can't strive for a better deal. But, but to be fair, you, you were right in that you didn't have 800. You know, it was established each person had 500, therefore you, you were right. Yeah. yeah I was like, so. oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so what, what, where were we headed that we needed to get on a boat anyway? Um, so we were uh, going to <laughs> vacay. Uh, vacation with the werewolves. All inclusive uh, trip to Sandals, Jamaica. Half were orc. That's probably half, better half where we're going. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so we were going to Belshire, but I believe the last thing that we decided on is we were going to the big town up the river and then gonna see what we could do there. Yeah, I can't remember what what we decide completely decided on yeah i don't remember if the we 700 did. gold was to go all the way to belshire or if that was yeah. just to go down the river it, it yeah, was to get a, there to get was, to belshire. Okay, yeah. 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 yeah yeah and one of the things you guys were saying was because the uh the guys had said they were actually headed towards the place that jason's going to remember the name of right now because i don't or fairhaven fairhaven um they were actually headed towards Fairhaven with supplies, which meant they're going out to the main body of water and going northeast. And you guys need to go south and slightly east from that yes. main body of water. So they were going to go out of their way to bring you. Um, well, other there, people was that, have... there was that option to stop by where uh, Tool Riva or Thul Riva, where uh, Tusk is from, which is yep. more on yep. their way than the other well, place. Yeah, well, th those are options you guys were discussing but hadn't brought up with the crew yet. I'm just uh, going right, with what yeah. they had. They were going to bring you there. Um, what you had heard on the dock was they're really the only ship headed out, um, i.e. the USS Railroad and 
<clears throat> they're just trying to get you on the boat. Now, you guys can negotiate something different. These guys are steamrolling us. Yes. <laughs> it's a steamship. The, um, the, the idea being, though, really no other boats are headed out. And yeah. the presumption is that Astra would like to discover what the heck's going on, possibly with this thing she found that her sister uh, shouldn't have been able to finish because she thought her sister was dead. <clears throat> but she found something. Still pretty distressing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's go back to that point of, uh, you know what, let's take a moment <clears throat> and look at the map again just to, uh, um, i got to activate it in order for others to actually get, get to see it and stuff. Um, but that is... Uh, We're on a map. So you guys are in this area over here. Um, where, where I actually have the tokens. <clears throat> and that area is where you're picking up the boat and headed towards, um, towards the, the open water, regardless of, of where else you end up. You'll be headed out that way, right? And then the, the adventure that you're on is bringing you to Belshire. And I just realized now, Jason, I didn't pull that map into Foundry yet. So Belshire is down here where I'm pointing that you can't see. Um, yeah, so let me point so here, up. there. Jason's very disappointed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unpointed. <laughs> it's pointless, actually. The um, Belshire's here where it has my uh, cursor now. Uh, and that's where you're headed. Um, the, what you call it? the, 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 the boat, the, uh, lupin, lupine, lupine, I think I said it was, that you're on, or that, that you're about to be on is going to head out, uh, within an hour or so. So if there's anything else you guys wanted to do before heading out, it would probably be a good time to do such a thing as such. Okay, well, we were on the boat waiting for, um, Emmett to talk with the captain about getting us a smaller, a better deal. Yeah, and he, and then, he came back with uh, yeah, 100 the gold 100 less. less. Yeah. So, and so um, I, I just, I, I wanted to point out that Allie's currently swimming next to the boat, and uh, yep. um, <laughs> well, uh, I wanted to make sure that you guys have anything you wanted to get done on land completed before heading into the boat. You have a little bit of time to get anything at the dock. Yeah. Uh, I was fine. I just wanted to talk to Dante, the, the charming NPC in front of me, and just see yeah. if I can figure out what they're hauling. Um, but everyone else can go first. I don't want to do anything else on land. I'm, I'm good. I just want to talk with some of the crew. Cool. Tusk, got through failing his uh, threat slash competition of arm wrestling, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, realized he should probably go and warn somebody important about the uh, werewolf town and to steer clear from it. <laughs> Wow, there's a thought. Neat. <clears throat> Who, um, I mean, just anyone in general? Do you want to? Anyone you, that looks like a guard or anything uh, that could deliver a message. Okay. And ask if they have anything that would cure that as well. Because, <laughs> uh, Postman, Belladonna. We, don't, we couldn't find any. A friend any, of right? mine wants to know. Not me. Yeah. Don't worry. You're safe, <laughs> sir. Um, Give me uh for for Tusk there, give me a persuasion roll, please. Uh Drum roll. Facts, not saves. Do, do, do. Persuasion, there we are. I think I heard you say with advantage. <laughs> uh, you hey, may have you could pull it out. You, you may have heard it, did you? I don't know. <laughs> do it. I think you said Tusk is much larger, so he's very persuasive. I rolled it. I don't know what's happening. Tusk is rolled something. A, yeah, you rolled a nineteen minus one. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna move that over here where we can actually look hey, at it. It never popped up, so that's still a good roll. That's what she said. <laughs> um, all Damn. right. What? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got um. As far as your role goes, you definitely have um, somebody, you, you found someone that will pay attention to what you were saying, and they are, um, they look like they're they're bringing it up with others to go in and notify and maybe help that town out. Awesome. Yeah. So, very good there. You may have actually just saved some people that you left to die a while ago. Tusk is just following orders. <laughs> uh, not a good example of anything, but 
<laughs> well, it was still well done, whether you meant to do it or not. <laughs> He was just recently cursed and wasn't really thinking about that. And all said was very pushy. So. Yeah. Was pushy. Cool. All right. Um, is there a potion shop in this town? There that is. That was the next question. <laughs> so the, the um, tricky part is I don't think there's such a thing as a potion to cure lycanthropy. You might have to find somebody who could whip up something custom. It's definitely not going to be on the shelf anywhere. Because I don't think there is such a thing. I mean, and I'm thinking fifth edition rules specifically. I don't think there's a cure lycanthropy potion anywhere. Where is your strongest alchemist? Um, <laughs> and or wizard couple. <laughs> you probably you, you could find somebody who might start to work on something for you, but it would take a couple of weeks for them to put something together that that might work. Do they have? Do uh, they have? Back here in a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah hey, do, do they have the materials that I could try to work on it in route? Um, some of them aren't stable enough to take on a boat. <laughs> I'm willing to take that chance. I won't <laughs> tell the captain. It's okay. It's cool. <laughs> so the Don't um, me, I decided this nitroglycerin. The <laughs> the alchemist wouldn't necessarily let it off. Uh, or let it out of the shop. So no, yeah, uh, there are things that he wouldn't sell because, you know, trade secrets and all. Yeah, well, I mean, come on, I'm a gnome. It's cool. Do you have anything that can stave off transformation for a short period of time? Um, <laughs> silver sword through the heart? Are there any, uh, any, Living options. any clerics or paladins in, in, in town that can perhaps remove a curse, maybe? Um, nobody that you could catch before the boat leaves. I would just, just want to get leave some in a more. Weeks. <laughs> uh, I would just, I would just want to pick up some extra materials for uh, making my clockwork items. Just uh, some spare. Okay, definitely on the port you could find some raw materials that you'd be able to use. I have an idea. I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Split up the party. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, this is what, I'll see you guys in about a month. <laughs> All right. Um, we may want to invest in some healing. In some what? Healing. Didn't we use up all of our potions? I don't. That's the question for you guys. Did you? Check your inventory. Yeah. I still have mine. I still have mine. Okay. Oh. Now you guys do have plenty of uh, gold and valuables that if you wanted to pick up a couple of more potions, you're definitely able to. Um, now remember, on this side of the river is the docks and plenty of trading spots. But where we get, where we talk about things like um, the uh, the church where you'd find paladins and priests and what have you, that's on the other side in the town proper, mm. so how which much is just is a, uh, too far to get to at this point. How much for healing potion? Um, I'm going to say you could do the what are the There's like three levels of healing potions yeah. in Regular, the game. Regular, greater, superior. So you could do greater. Um, where you are now at uh, 50 gold apiece. It's a good deal for a greater potion. Yeah. That works for me, man. This is the side of the river where they, they, they take things in and let them go at a lower price because to get them onto the other side takes more man hours and what have you. This is the bargain side. You get things wholesale over here. Hey. Yeah. I picked up a couple. Okay, so we get, yeah. we're going to... So Dante... Dante tells you really what they're carrying is almost exclusively lumber. Oh. Um, there's a lot of wooded area here in this, um, in this general vicinity, in this county, if you will. A uh, lot of wooded area and uh, Fairhaven's paying primo dollars for, uh, for lumber to help build up. And they're able to pretty much fill the boat with uh, different types of lumber that's been milled in different ways and they just get a whole ton of money for it when they get there. Hey, Joe, quick question. Yep. Uh, platinum is still like 100 gold in this game, or is it 10 gold? And yeah, 10? and it, okay. everything is like 10, 10, 10 for me at least. Okay. What yeah. the heck yeah. are we worried about 800 gold for? We got 50 platinum. Is that a piece, or was that like each? Say that again? From the Dragon Slayer? Yeah. 50 platinum is what I've written down for Tusk. Is that each person, or was that... Uh, so we yeah, all got 500 gold worth of stuff. So yeah, but I know, like, Chris chose it, yeah. to get it yeah. in platinum. platinum. Yeah, yeah, it was just easier to carry. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, you could write down that you've got a couple of fancy goblets and some silverware. And, you know, however you want to 
word it. Uh, but unless you're going to use an item as an item, just figure you've got 50 gold worth of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Right. And just about anybody would recognize that value and trade you. Okay. All right. So uh, I would just tell Dante that I mean, that's fascinating that uh, you are a lumber people. Uh, I, I, I have a great respect for the, the people who ship various goods here. But uh, uh, do you have a personal quarters here underneath the deck? Um. And I'll, I'll get back to describing these guys. Remember, I was saying they're kind of like cookie cutter of each other, whereas Adam's like the tallest, biggest guy. Uh, they're all similar, but it's like the next guy's an inch or two shorter, the next guy's an inch or two shorter, etc. cetera. Um, and at first glance, you're pretty sure they were all human because of the way they carried themselves, and they're almost all the same shape and size. But you notice when you're talking with Dante, he, he looks like he's more half-elf. He's got a little bit of pointed ears. Um, the uh, uh, Fenton, who you saw, also, uh, he's kind of near where you are there, uh, Marty. He's, um, he looks like a, a, a hugely tall dwarf. <laughs> he's, he's like a five-foot-tall dwarf. Um, but he's definitely a dwarf, slightly thinner. But... They're, they look so much like each other because they seem to be styling their hair the same. They're wearing the same um, deck outfit. They're all dressed, uh, you know, like the same sailor. And that really made them look identical um, until you start talking to them and interacting with them. Uh, but they all have the same mannerisms. So when he's talking to you, he's got that patronizing smile, the slightly slower patronizing voice. And he's, he likes to agree with what you're saying. And when you ask him about the, um, the crew quarters, he says, yeah, we, we can sleep below, but, you know, we'll fill that up with cargo and make more money and we'll sleep above decks. Oh, oh, well, well, fantastic. Well, I was going to offer maybe a, a little bit of uh, some of the things. I'll flash some of my goblets and some of my things that I got. I'm like, maybe uh, for more comfortable accommodations, but I understand that here. You got to make uh, make money where you can make money. Uh, um, I'll, I'll look back. Is the, rest of the, is the rest of the team back on the boat with me now? Uh, yeah, I think everyone's time? on the boat now. Yeah. All right. Um, Ali, um, did you pay the man for, um, uh, for our passage here? Are we ready to go and ship out? I believe I'm ready if you all are. All right, all set, my man. You good to go? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> all right, and then Tusk, uh, how you feel? How, I'll, I'll kind of get over it. How are you feeling, old boy? Are you like uh, feeling toothy? Are you feeling, you know, <laughs> mm, ah, kind of like that? Is that? Well, is that? I'm, I'm Grandma Tusk, cheesy, what big eyes nothing, you have? <laughs> nothing especially to to me. Okay. At this time. Marvelous, marvelous. We are ready to go. Ali, why don't you tell the, your, your shipmate here um, that we're ready to cast off uh, and hit, and set sail for, for good old Belshire. I didn't say I was ready to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. So let's do, um, before we go, I need to ask Randy to give me another D20 roll. Yay! Oh, we trapped on a boat with the werewolf. <laughs> I mean, we have it on the dock. Boop, boop. Yeah, I was gonna say they'll just kick us off. It'll be fine, you know. <laughs> Eleven. Know okay. All right. Now, the um, they go about their their uh sailorly duties. Um, the captain. Shouts a couple of orders here and there, you know, like raising this, tightening that, lashing this, cleaning that. Mm -hmm. And um, within a couple of minutes, the boat is pulled away from the dock. The sail starts going up and you start uh, heading out. And you really, who who's um, spent any time on a boat previously? Anybody? Uh, mostly luxury cruises for me here. Yeah. Uh, also would have. <clears throat> yeah. He's been all over. I probably <laughs> would have. I don't think Tusk would have spent stuff, too much time on anything huge, but maybe small. No. <laughs> so the the size and shape of the boat, you can tell it is very weighed down. If you spend time on a vessel, it is riding very low in the water. It feels heavy. All movements seem to take a little extra. The the wood um, in the, the ship's construction just seems to creak a little more than you might think it would. This ship is... Um, definitely heavy and weighted down. And um, it looks like they're 
just still again going about their regular stuff when when it starts moving it's like displacing more water it's creating a nice little wake behind it but um you guys get going uh get ahead of uh not steam i guess ahead of wind going head wind okay mm-hmm. the um the boat's traveling along just fine and um, I would like to have you guys describe, well, well, first off, they're going to set up a spot on the deck that, let me actually, let me take my, uh, take the, the pencil, the, t- the tool to draw, and let me just make a freeform drawing here. Um, this is a horribly odd square-ish spot. They're going to set up a covering, um, think like army tent kind of thing. They're setting up a covering for you guys to be protected on deck from, you know, wave, uh, ocean splash and any rain or any weather. Uh, They said they would make accommodations for you on the deck. They set that up. They roll out a couple of um, sleeping tarps and they they let you know that that's where you would be staying uh, whenever you're ready to sleep. This is the guest quarters, as it were. Um, Now, once that's set up, what I'd like to know is how are you guys going about yourselves on the boat? Well, I mean, Marty would be uh, reviewing all of the mage hand drawings in... Oh, my goodness, you're terrible here. I'll be talking to my mage hand uh, just inadvisably <laughs> as I'm going through some of these things here. And then uh, I would spend some time uh, talking with Ali just a little bit to get a little bit more information about Belshire. One, because he's concerned, but another one is because if the town really has life, then maybe there's a marketing opportunity for him there. Interesting thought. <laughs> I heard there wasn't anything left of that town. Yeah, yeah, so did I. I mean, we, we, we have a big old X on that part of the map at our headquarters for, you know, distribution. But, I mean, if there's somebody there. I can't imagine there would be. I mean, like I said, the Perhaps last time the I was there was, uh, I don't know who would have revived it. Hmm. And as you said, even... you said this thing belonged to your sister here, Allie. The necklace? Yes, you said it was something that was made by her? Um. My sister worked with uh, metal. She made a bunch of jewelries. Um, every now and again, she'd try her hand in something else, um, and she'll pull out the knife, as you can see. You know, oh. she tried her hand with cutlery, just anything she could get her hands on. Um, but she was in the process of making this necklace for me um, when everything happened. It wasn't nearly finished. What do you think? Uh, how do you think it got into this uh, dragon's horde place? I imagine that those who raided the town had just brought it back for the horde but like i said it it wasn't finished the night that we had got raided so to my knowledge she, she was dead so then maybe she was so she went into the dragon's horde place to finish it for you is that what you think i have no idea that seems I've, quite dangerous that seems quite quite dangerous quite bold i've assumed she was dead this whole time i searched all over i've been all over with the knights i did my research and i found nothing and not to dampen your spirits, Sir Allie, but I mean, if your sister was alive, do you think, why, why wouldn't she have tried to contact you by now? It's been some time, yes? Years, years. Mm. Wasn't there something about a mine being mentioned somewhere? Yeah, in the book, there was the idea the that, yeah, the, um, when the hybrid kobolds didn't find what they wanted, sometimes they would grab people to be brought back as labor in quote unquote the mines. Hmm. So I don't know. We had no if... location on that, right? <clears throat> right, right. I mean, that's something you guys could research. Maybe not on the boat, but <laughs> it's something that you could research. Although I guess technically you could ask them if they know anything yeah. about some kind yeah. of mines, right? Yeah, I would ask the captain. Yeah, see if there <clears throat> any stories. Okay. Um. So. Uh, Captain, you know what? Let me let me move him because he's going to spend a lot of his time. Actually, I say I want to move him, and then I can't seem to click him. Uh, huh? That's interesting. Not. I can click both of those guys. Everything looks monkey on my screen. I don't even have like. Other I can target everybody. Why can't I? I'm like the gum and all. Um, all right. So I'll 
worry about that in a minute. But <laughs> Adam's going to spend, oh, you know what it is? I'm clicking dots because I got the friggin' pencil. What a dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> why are they, I'm looking at him like, why are there red dots where he is? He's bleeding. Uh, yes. Uh, wait. And, oh. and if I moved this over, I could have seen that on the screen. Um, oh. Look at that. He's got little red dots on him. Poor feller. Um, he's bleeding already, and you guys haven't even attacked him yet. The tusk was close. But he's going to spend most of his time towards the back of the boat here. There's the little captain's quarter. I shouldn't say little, but there's the captain's quarters above. And is it dark? The rest? Is it dark out here? Um, it is not dark. Okay. I can only see part of the boat because of my eyes. Yeah, most of my screen is black. Hmm. Well, we should be able to put light on you then, or I can try and fix the lighting for the whole place. Let me, uh... yeah, I, I can't even do, see uh, anybody else. You choose daylight. I'm going to I'm gonna click transition to daylight and see if that helps you guys. The, um... On the stream screen, though, you can see that it's... You can see the whole boat. So, if nothing else, we got that to work with. And I'm going to zoom out a little, too. But, um... Yeah, so Adam spends a lot of his time towards the back of the boat near his cabin and office area. And um, <clears throat> so if you go to talk to him, that's where he's going to be. Uh, and, you know, he would tell, uh, how, how are you asking him? Give me some idea of how you want to phrase it, how you want to approach him. If he's heard of any, uh, I don't know, trying to think, uh, well, I'll just, I'll just say it. I'll like, do you know of any, uh, hybrid kobolds that have a mind in these parts or in your travels i just come out and say the truth you know because it's kind of weird it would stick out if somebody mentioned something like that to me. um are you trying to are you just asking him straight up or are you trying to get anything out of him i mean are we looking for a role here that you want to be successful with or just see if he has anything well i guess we'll see if he has anything and then i'll make a role if he, i think he's lying about it <laughs> like, i'm not trying to be persuasive I'm just like hey have you heard yeah. about this it's kind of weird kind of, okay because you know, okay. i assume he deals with a lot of different people and he goes all over the place he might have uh yeah. heard something yeah. about it he um so he says um well um i i i feel like i heard of something maybe with some weird kobold dragon people um it's like up northeast near, um, what's that town, Lagat or something like that, maybe? <laughs> but is there, I don't think there's a mine there. You ever mine someplace? You know? I'm not sure what kind of mine there, that's the problem. Yeah, I'd have to say I, I, I'm not familiar with it myself. I will roll insight to see if she's lying. <laughs> yes, yes, you will. Also, don't trust anybody. <laughs> oh. So, Most um, honest dude you've ever met. <laughs> yeah, he is telling the truth. So there, there's no real difference in his demeanor compared yeah. to the way he was normally talking to you. So it doesn't seem like he's hiding anything or seeing, right. you know, saying anything out of the ordinary. And at least what he mentioned about, you know, maybe some weird dragon things up near that town, that kind of pans out. Yeah, that was true. That's true. Um, is that a ballista on the front of the ship? Um, it is, um, yes, but it's configured more like a harpoon. Okay. Same idea, though. And it is not loaded by default. There are, you know, big harpoon listas laying on the ground next to it. Bahoons. <laughs> what you doing, Tusk? <laughs> yeah, who else? Um, how, how else are you conducting others? How are you conducting yourselves over the first couple of hours while the boat gets underway? Uh, Tusk is mostly anxiously pacing around because of uh, worrying about his curse and uh, just a little bit mad because of how things went out with the captain earlier. Which was that the captain or was that? It was, it was the captain. Yeah, it was the captain. So, uh, uh, well, well, cause I, cause I'm not really doing anything. I'm just kind of sitting there, you know, entertaining myself. Uh, Tusk, old boy, you're going to wear a hole in the floor, old man. Are you all right? Uh, just, uh, there's a lot going on at once. So I'm, I'm trying to clear my head. Um, look at me. I'm a mess. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Any extra clothes here, or do you have a? Oh yes, of course. Thing? Yes, of course. And I'll reach into my pack. I'll give him. I'll give. Well, I, I, we're out. We're out of the, the we're out of the promotional T-shirt. So I'm going to give him one of my robes. It's 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 gaudy as all get out, and it is probably not going to fit him very well. But you can probably be wear it like a cloak or something. Yeah, you you that. And then these. you'll. Uh... Yeah, it's it's a it's a bright gaudy maroon with like shimmering sparkles on it, and like you know a very nice like neck flap that comes up here it makes you kind of look like Dracula a little bit. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> like neck flap. Like yeah, that. yeah. I don't know what it's called. Collar, I guess. Collar. Is what it's called. It's actually called. Um, <laughs> I like yes. neck flap much better. Yeah, so do I. So do I. This, yeah. this is the quality that you get from me when I'm GMing too. Right? Yeah. The descriptions. I could also <laughs> replace this shirt with a uh, uh, what you'd call yourself again? Your bull, your fire bull. <laughs> Fireball. The crimson crimson Tusk. minute. <laughs> Tusk, you've been traveling this now for some time here. How do you not know the branding yet? Sit down, please. Here, I'll pull out my employee handbook again. I'm going to walk through all the modules. <laughs> there he goes again. So that he knows what product we're selling. Uh, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm here to protect your merchandise. Yes, yes, yes. But you, but, you, but you need to know how to, again, if someone comes up and asks you, I'm busy, all sets busy, we can't take questions. They might come to you, old man. So here. And I will, again, sit down with Tuscan uh, and try to distract him a little bit with our our, our 75 page novel of how to sell Crimson Minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> the, the monthly half orc training session. All right. So what letter is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh my. All right. Well, let me, I'll pull, I'll pull out the big book of letters and I'll just be like, all right. So this here is an A. <laughs> I don't think we have the, the travel in the world to teach this barbarian how to read. <laughs> Did we I mean, ever decide where our where we're going exactly? We're going to Belshire, I thought. Yeah, but on which route are we taking? The, going to full full Riva? The, this is um, up to you guys at this point. I guess part of what I was looking for is: Are you going to try and get them to change their route, or are you going to let them bring you for the agreed upon seven hundred gold to uh, Belshire? Do they well, want we, that up front, or do they want that when we got off? They, they want it up front because there yeah. is no <laughs> after. Okay, they, I guess the plan already would have been wherever they were going. They were just yeah. Like, say let's go to Belshire. If they're if they're willing to take us all the way to Belshire, I think the fastest we get Alley to or her place is the best option. So they already have the gold. Yeah, it'd be faster just to take the boat the whole way. Yep. Okay. Um. Uh. In the first night, as it starts getting darker, um, I need uh. Give me a perception check for each of you. Okay. This is before we would say people are turning in for the night. How much would I have taught Tusk, maybe, in terms of letters? <laughs> You've taught him two vowels. Ooh, I'll, <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take it. I'll take it. A and I. Look at that. I, Tusk with a natural 20. I eat and a food. <laughs> a food thing. Nice. All right. So, um... What I'd like to know is, are you, are you guys going to, uh, uh, how are you going to sleep? I mean, you're just going to all go where your assigned, you know, guest quarters are on the deck or what are you going to do? Cause we're getting closer to that. Well, and, depending yeah. on the weather, I mean, I, I might, is there, is that like a harpoon machine? Is that like I have a chair and it like moves around, spins? Um, it is not. A sit in one, no. Can I make it one? I'd be like, hey, I got you got some material. I'll build you like a chair and I'll hook, the, I'll hook you up. Um, stuff, stuff. It'd be a lot cooler. I'm, I'm an inventor. I, I do things, invent things, upgrade things. That's an interesting thought. I think I would need some persuasion to make that happen. <laughs> I wish I could use my perception roll for that. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that hopefully, your perception roll still helps you a little bit here. But well, I'll tell him. I'll, the first, yet. I'll tell him the story about the uh, you know the trebuchet toss uh, <laughs> over that one town. Uh, yeah. He's heard about it. That'll give me a little a little advantage about like uh, the Crimson Minotaur five thousand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mark seven of doom. Uh, uh, so no advantage for that story first. <laughs> um, let's. Uh, Perfect. I got some reputation. I have reputation. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Let's yeah. say. <laughs> uh, let's see what your role is. Let's go with that. All right. Um, okay. So yes, um, 
just a little bit of word has reached them only because they're travelers. Uh, in reality, that was like, what, a week ago? So it hasn't been that long a time. And it would hard, be hard for a lot of news to reach there. But because your role was pretty good um, with a 16 there. Yeah, he, he says, um, again, presuming you're going to talk to the captain about this. Mm -hmm. Since it's his boat and all, and you want to modify it. Um, he'd say, yeah, you know, I've heard a little bit. I noticed you guys with the uh, Crimson Minotaur logo stuff, which is, that's kind of neat. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, you could probably make something, but you've got to make sure that you only use the materials that we give you. Okay. Yes. And he calls over. He does this like shrewd whistle um calls dante over uh mutters some stuff into his ear and dante goes towards one of the cargo holds um and returns shortly thereafter with a handful of what looks like relatively cheap wood um lighter wood like a base wood or something like that that is probably going to be sturdy enough but isn't super high quality okay. <clears throat> Hey, um, I mean, garbage in, garbage out, man, you know, so see how it works. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Allie, um, what do you think we should do about Tusk here? I mean, we don't have necessarily a lot amount of space. I see Allset is over there tinkering with something like he always does. Um, but, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, what do you think here? I mean, you are hired for, for, for protection, you and Tusk here, so I lean to your expertise on maybe containing Tusk in his current, and I look around to make sure no one's listening to it, his current, you know... You know, predicament. Are there any metal bars or loops inside our? Uh, little well, I was thinking here. tusk for just and again, don't, don't take this the wrong way here. But is there a brig? If 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 for example, I were to tie you to say the chain of the anchor, and you were to change, I could just knock the anchor into the water, and you would go in with it. <laughs> I'm trying to find some place to secure me where they won't see and have questions. Well, that's why I said I would be a long string to an anchor chain in here, and then if you go all, I would then just drop the anchor, and you would tumble overboard. Do they keep the anchor on deck, or is it one of those where they all pull this tumble up and pull the chain up? I'm not sure, Ali. What do you did you see the anchor here? Sea, you're a sea person. R Randy, I just I sent you a, a message that I want you to read, if you don't mind. I believe it's called a capstan. <laughs> I didn't happen to notice. Um, hmm. All right. Well, I mean, I don't know, Tusk. I mean, you've you've been okay for the past day or so, right? You haven't had any cravings, hungers, urges, yes? Just the normal stuff. Anything <laughs> roasted or, uh, you know, the usual. Maybe 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 I just stay up with you then, Tusk. Here tonight, I'll take we'll take watches and we'll just keep an eye on you. If something goes wrong, we just you know, um, how much silver do we have, Ali? We can just tie him up. Okay. And if anybody asks, I will politely explain that you're into some weird. That they shouldn't kink shame here. We paid them. <laughs> no questions asked. I like it. I think that is a good ruse. I think it's a very good ruse here. I don't know, Tuss. What do you think? <sighs> we got a suggestion to tie him to the mast where the sleeping area is. Could Any that. place that you guys think is uh, the safest, either the uh, the sail, uh, the anchor, any bars around here, or if you can somehow get me to the brig if they have one. I think they've used every inch of this ship for cargo transport. So even if they have a brig, I'm sure they've locked up lumber in it instead of actually using it for what it's intended. You may also take all your platinum bags and toss them on Tie them to a harpoon, and if he gets that. a little furry, we shoot him off. <laughs> is, the, is the harpoon big enough, though, all set? Uh, thank you for chiming in here. Is it big enough for, to carry? Tusk is a big boy. I know it shows Fenton's hanging around here, but has he wandered off uh, from here, or is he... No, no, we've, we've, brought, we've brought him into the conversation here. <laughs> it's, um, really, the crew is going to be all over the place. Okay. All right. I, I, Marty, I, I need to talk to you about our uh, future plans. Oh, of course, of course, of course, yes. Um, do you need to talk to me in private here, old man? Uh, can we get our crew just to 
we should probably all talk for us. Oh, oh yes, uh, yes. All set. Can you put down? All set. Can you please stop tinkering for just a moment, please? And, and come over here. <laughs> Doubtful. All set. All set. Yes, yes. Uh, in a minute. In a minute. Oh my. God. <laughs> if, yeah. If you guys want to talk without the uh, crew about, I mean, it's easy enough. I'm just to make it convenient. I'll move all the crew away from the quarters that were set up for you. And if you guys all just want to go there to talk, you're welcome to. They seem to have tossed Al set underwater because he's not on up oh, there he is. <laughs> uh, all, all, right. all right, so let's uh, let's gather around here. It's, uh, uh, Tusk has some uh, things he would like to share with us. Uh, it's one. It's kind of a funny feeling, but two, a uh, familiar feeling. I see some something in their eyes. Seems is it? Weird. Is it? Are you that age, old man? Are you? Are you finally becoming a? I'm in my twenties. <laughs> I, do, I don't. I mean, your people might be different in terms of when they become. Men and women? No, I'm fine. It's oh, something, okay. about, something about this crew, they seem. They're all werewolves? Familiar, Is that what you're saying? They're werewolves, that's what you're saying. That's just what we, when you're we screwed them, up that bad. That's what we're just, saying. Just, just when you're passing by, take a gl- uh, glance in their eyes if you can. Just see if you can see something off. The cl- uh, yeah, Dante's pretty cool. All right, well, well, so when you say they're a little bit off, what do you mean, Tusk? Are we looking for, like... Like horns? It just, are we seems, for? it just seems familiar. I need to spend some time f- contemplating this. So if you want to take yeah. me up someplace safe, um, I don't know, Joe, <laughs> how familiar, <laughs> what familiarity would it, it strike me? Just something that I think I've seen in the past or? It's, it's, it's something. So, um, it's just, a, a yeah. fam- it's, it's a funny feeling, something similar. That I've and seen, I guess I like would I've say, seen. No, and it might that, that that might actually stir something in Tusk to think that this isn't something from the past. It's just something. It's not like you may have seen them once upon a time. This is there's just something odd. Something's something's unnerving me, and I'm not quite sure what it is about this crew. Well, Ali, you know one right. of them here. Is there something amiss with your friend? I don't. I don't think. TM. Is TM still on the boat? Emmett? Emmett was the the one that you taught. He is also military. Not necessarily... You, you didn't know him. It was just the familiarity, you introducing yourself as a knight and him uh-huh. being an ex-military man. That. Um, oh, TM was yeah. back in the town. Yeah. That's right. Okay. He I suggested you talk to Emmett at the, at the boat. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, hey, Joe. I want to. I want to telepathically speak to Dante, but I don't want him to necessarily know it's me talking to. Him. Voice not. Okay. So you're going to. I have, the, I have the awakened mind thing. I was just gonna, you know, as long as he's within thirty feet of me, I want to just. So are you going kinda... to then talk in pictures or in a different voice or? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to use a different voice so he doesn't recognize me. Okay. And then. And I just um, wanna... Then I, I guess I would want a little deception with that. Yep, that makes uh-huh. sense. Let's see how deceptive you can be. Hopefully it's better than my uh, stealth checks. Yeah. That's about the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, the other thing about that, let me just mention to you, Chris, that when Alset takes a look to see if he can get below, it really is just like full to the gills with wood. It, okay. You don't know if you'd even be able to get there, and if so, it would take some time to like push stuff out of the way to sneak into the spot. Gotcha. Thank okay. you. Um, and as far as we go with the deception check, so what is it you want to say to him? Do you change during a full moon? Are you um, afraid of silver? Things like that. Okay. Uh, to, and I want to keep an eye on him from like the tent because I, I can see him behind like that whatever I don't know what that is right there if it's just like a uh, an opening like a door that, like a, yeah that's below, those are the cargo doors the um, so I'm kind of like peering out from the tent just trying to like see if he's uh, freaking out I mean he's gonna might freak out because he's got voices in his head yeah. do you Let's dance with the devil of the pure moonlight yeah. <laughs> he spins his head around a couple of times when he hears the noise um he looks up at uh, the captain for a moment who doesn't look back at him and then he just like stops and kind of scratches his chin and then goes back to swabbing the deck I'll say answer me Dante are you a answer werewolf me, Dante. 
answer me, Dante. Um, he, when you say that, his head turns, and Tusk, he stares directly into your eyes. Hi. And, and the, the, the thing that comes to your mind um, when he looks right at you is the word brother. Like a kinship of some type. Hmm. Interesting. I get in the way of their of his eyesight as they're locking eyes, and like my head comes in, I'm like, Tusk, are you all right? Tusk. Uh, Marty, Tusk, are you? Do, are you? Hold on a second. Uh, Tusk is gonna empty his boot and get his coin that he's been standing on for the last few episodes, <laughs> and uh, silver coin, and uh, he's just gonna walk up to Dante and uh, be like. Hey, catch, and flicks the coin towards him. Well, I'm going to go with what we had talked about before insofar as silver doesn't damage werewolves. It just doesn't not damage them. You know what I mean? It's nothing special. It's not like their skin burns. You just, you can cut them easier. Um, Penny for your thoughts. I mean, he'll, well, he'll grab it, and he'll look at it and just kind of like fling it back at you. Not flip it the way you did, but kind of like, fling it chuck it back at you uh, and um he says kind of in a hushed voice not here tusk will not all right uh just wondering if uh there's a meal plan for today <laughs> just starts doing small talk <laughs> real fast and um he'll shift the same gear um well, yeah, of course, There's, um, there'll be provisions if you guys want them. I guess we kind of figured you brought your own food, but hey, if you want to a... eat what the crew eats, you're welcome to. Didn't know if this was all expense paid uh, <laughs> crews or not. <laughs> Should be for this money. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go update the, uh, I don't know, harpoon ballista, whatever the hell it is. I want to make sure, too, when I update this thing, like it could spin completely 360. Let me know if there's if a, you know what I mean. a poker <laughs> night going on <laughs> uh, later on. Okay. Um, so, Chris, I guess what I'm looking at for that is, I mean, you're going to do some kind of construction check here. What's it going to be? I can't remember what I used last time. It's a tinkerer's check, isn't it? Yeah, but even then. But like, what what skill, what skill or um, stat does that use? Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what does it really use? It's um, a proficiency bonus plus d twenty on that, and I think he has it. I think Chris has a specialty though, where. Yeah, the gets, artificial sword gives me the double proficiency. Bonus. Yeah, so it's basically a d twenty plus double his proficiency. So plus four on a d twenty. Yep. I can just do that. Yeah. Sure. Well, do it. And this will. I mean, it's going to take time, regardless. You guys. Um, should be on the boat for several days, so it um, you'll have the time to do it, but it will take time. Excuse me, and we can see how um, hey. how well, yeah. So that's with a roll good. of a sixteen plus four, that's twenty. Uh, that means you're good. you're most likely going to get everything you want in there. The seat might actually be partially comfortable too, for that matter. Hey, hey it better be. Yeah. <laughs> um, the modifications that you have to do to get it to th swing at three sixty pretty much involves remounting it because where it is is close enough to the edge that it can't swing all the way around and it has gotcha. to be moved back some in order for it to to right. do a full swing the yep. um the other part of uh working on it is we'll say so emmett's up there with you and pretty much the whole time you're there he's just he's nearby and very curious as to what you're doing yeah i'll do some heavy lifting if he's gonna yeah, hang around yeah i mean he's got he's got some stuff to do if you ask him to do something he'll uh look back at the captain before he does any of it and um if the I'll captain gives him, him he... a nod he'll help but yeah. yeah okay i'll ask him if he smokes if he's a smoker i got some good uh pipe weed good yeah. got some good weed dude got the rainbow cohosh <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, so you might be making a friend there over the first uh, few hours. So as we get to sleep on the first night, how is the party handling sleep on the first oh. night? Well, I, I would first go up to Tusk and make Tusk. So, I mean, you, I saw you flip a coin to that old old friend of yours. Is, is he really an old friend? Or what's, what's going on? 
I was just asking him what, uh, okay, I'm not going to lie to you guys. There's no one around here. Okay. Um, he whispered brother in my head and, uh, he said, we'll, we'll talk later. Not right now. So, uh, I think there's something else going on. I'll let I mean, you I didn't, I, I didn't even see any resemblance there, old man. That's, that's shocking. Your brain's smarter than that. You know what I say, don't you? <laughs> Your brain well, we, is smarter well, I mean, than that. looking be for... another pain in my ass. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, I mean, we're looking for Ali's sister here. Now you found a brother. I mean, this is this is great. This is a family reunion tour. I'm, I'm very excited about this. Yeah, it's going to be a family reunion, all right. I think they're also suffering from lycanthropy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, well, um... But I think they found a way to manage it. So I'm okay. going to talk to them in private. And all right. Hopefully, maybe they can help my situation. Uh, oh, do you need any assistance from us, old man? Yeah, me, Ali. We are, I know Alsett's over there working on something. I don't know how available he'll be tonight, but... I'm not sure. I am I think I might be okay alone. They don't seem like a threat. They led with brother and made no hostile actions knowing my situation. So, I think I may be okay. All right, but, uh, all right. I, I can always use a wingman. Oh, all right, all right. Well, I have the perfect wingman for you here, Ali, and I push Ali forward. <laughs> And I'm like, excuse me. Is, uh, well, Ali, 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 you are you are you are smaller, so you can probably again hide in better places. I can go myself invisible, and we can back up Tusk here in case something goes wrong. Nobody wingier. <laughs> mm-hmm. So indeed. Let me get this straight. Yes. <laughs> you like to sneak to sneak somewhere private. With Tusk and this man over here, and eavesdrop. Well, I mean, he just said he, Tusk said he could use some backup here, and again, we're his backup. And also leave all set potentially with a crew full of werewolves. Well, I mean, uh, we can By t- himself. All set is he's a very capable man. He's very, very good. And we'll tell him, of course, where we're going. If there's just him, then you two fall back, and I'll take care of it. Well, I don't, I don't think we should go alone here. Maybe I'll stay with all set and Ali. Maybe you go with Tusk. I'm about tired of you, uh, <laughs> volunteering me for things. You're, you're hired security here, Ali. This is part of the job. <laughs> Get volunteered yes, what to do. The halfling is going to be the half orc's bodyguard. They'll believe that. <laughs> uh, the bodyguard does not need co bodyguard to bodyguard said bodyguard. Um, I refuse to accept co bodyguard as title. Thank you. Yes. All right. Go. All right. Would, it, would it make you feel better, Ali, if I made you invisible? Yes. All right, I'm, I'm, I, that's it. I'm going alone. Right, so <laughs> I, I, I will, I will, I will, I will rub my hands together. I will spit in both, and then I will just hit her on the head, just like a little gentle bonk, and then she goes invisible. Before she does, she will like very, very like visibly like. Oh. <laughs> I don't see any of it. Uh, I'm oblivious to all of it here. All right, Tusk, uh, Tusk, old man. Um, as he's walking away. Not old. <laughs> How old is Marty? Oh, is everybody old, man? Yeah. Ma- Marty, Ma- Marty doesn't reveal his age. But anyways, <laughs> Tusk old man, uh, Ali will be, will be, yeah. We'll go, and I'll, I'll like, try to f- feel where Ali's at and kind of just gently nudge her towards oh where Tusk eye. is going. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ali. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'll, I'll go over to Al set while, while he's working on things, and I'll pretend to be helping him, but I'll tell him what's going on to catch him up. Wait, what are you doing? I'm pretending, to help, I'm pretending to help you, old man. Here's, but there's... The, the custom... <laughs> you're not going to pretend if you're going to come to help you're going to help <laughs> here hold this hold this right here as he as he hands it to me i just let it go i don't let me get you <laughs> you're, you're, you're a silly old man but no at least get me... your believe your mage hand here like, come on fine, fine 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 I'll, I'll cast mage hand and mage hand will go and pick up the thing and hold it for him <laughs> what i'm trying, what I'm trying to say though what i'm trying to say al here is that there are a, we're on a boat full of Lycanthropes here. And oh, you just catching up to that? No, I knew that about an hour ago. <laughs> well, then why the hell did you say anything, old man? <laughs> what are we going to do about it? It's too late. We're already on the boat. Well, so we're going to just gonna let them eat us all here? Is that it? But anyways, well, I mean, I'm hoping they're not hungry for... T- you know, Tus- they, they, Tus- Tusk believes they have a way to maybe manage their... Well, that language. would be nice. So that he's going to nice. go down there with Ali, but we might need to be ready to, you know, help them. Yeah, that's why I'm uh, updating this right here. That's I see that here. Point. I see that. I see that. Do they have any lifeboats on here in case we need to leave? Uh, I don't think so, but you might want to check that out. That's against regulation here. We should have definitely done our homework on this boat before we signed up on it. Well, I have this plan. I'm going to launch myself with this thing and then parachute down, parasail someplace. I think that's my plan. You have a parasail? 
Well, just for me. <laughs> when, when the hell did you make that? I thought that would be brilliant marketing, Hill. Then why aren't you sharing I'm these? I'm still things? working on it. it oh my god. <laughs> Um, and also just, 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 and and also just note, with each other for the next hour. As a side note to your conversation there, there is, uh, or there are two small, like, rowing canoes um, in the boat towards the back. Okay. They're just kind of lashed to the sides of where the captain's uh, bridge and stuff are. It'd be enough to hold, like, three people each, which is the crew. Right. But there's a couple small people, so that's, like, part of you. We could, could all of us fit in one boat? Our part, our well, I mean, we have Allie's, Allie and you are quite small. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I the four of you could force it, especially if you've got somebody who's really good at balancing a small boat and rowing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think we have I think we have the skills for that. Sounds pretty good. All right, so I'll try to blend in with Alice at pretending to help him with my mage hand, um, while kind of paying attention to where Allie and Tusk go. Okay, so at this point, it's like I was saying, it's time for people essentially to start sleeping. You see mm-hmm. most of the, uh, first off, the captain goes, retreats into his quarters. Um, let me, I might as well move him in there. Um, hey, what, so if I reload my page, nothing happens right on your end. It's just, I pop in and pop out. Cause I'm like, I can't see half the characters on my screen right now, but. Yeah. If you, um, you know what I can I, re- I reloaded my, I reloaded mine and it was fine. Yeah, go ahead and try reloading it and see if it fixes it. If not, then I'll add a light source to your character that'll fix it. But um, now I can see, I can see the entire boat, but like all the characters except for mine and a couple of the crew, um, I can't. Yeah, I can't see their. Oh, oh, anymore. okay. So we'll then yeah, that's there. probably something there. Yeah, because you should right. see the six crew and the four characters. Okay. They should all be there. Um. But yeah, uh, Captain Adam. He goes on to, or, or goes into his um, his quarters. Uh, Barney takes over the area where the captain was, and only Emmett is left on deck. The others go to sleep, um, and they're kind of bunking down not too far from you guys. I'm going to put them where they are, um, back here, along kind of along the edge of the boat. Oh, that's what it is. Like that. Um, let me see. I got them. What's that, Chris? Yeah, so I can see the entire boat. I, it's basically, even though I can see the entire ship, if I don't move it, it it's blocking out the people because I'm not close enough to uh, for my vision to see them, apparently. All right, so, yeah. And yeah, I think... So, I, okay, no worries. Yeah, I should be able to fix that easy enough because the, the light <laughs> itself isn't that important here. Um, right. And let me just put here. No, not that one. <laughs> yeah, let, let me right just now. make it so you can't see cloud. anything. A little rain cloud over here. Um, yeah, I was, yeah, just adding light that doesn't really work. So let me. Um, maybe that isn't the easy way to do it. So I'm not going to do it that way. But I'll go back to <laughs> the the crew. They kind of settle down back towards actually where the um the canoes are except for Emmett. So they're sleep everybody pretty much sleeps towards the back of the boat. And they put you guys kind of towards the center but a little towards the back. Mm-hmm. Um and Emmett is up towards the front of the boat. Um I let me move him up there actually cuz he's like way up front. Um essentially he's a lookout while Barney keeps the boat on um on course. That is how they situate. It's getting darker. They tell you time to go to sleep. You know, stop the, uh, stop all the noise with the um, the the harpoon machine because they want to sleep. Yeah, I mean, as long as I got my seat on there, I'm gonna just gonna I'm just gonna sit in there and take a nap. You know. Okay, so you want to sleep right there. Yep. Okay. Uh, how are you? Yep. Oh, have a smoke in my pipe and then uh you know chat with Emmett before I doze off for a bit. Okay. So as you guys were getting ready with your plan and as you made <clears throat> Alistair invisible, that's when they're all starting to settle down. So how do you how does Tusk and Allie want to approach the uh the crew? I'm pretty much just gonna follow um Tusk around while trying to stay out of everybody's way to not risk having somebody bump into something invisible. All right, Marty, you go and get some sleep. I 
alone will uh, go and wander the deck and keep watch for us. Oh, good, good man, good man here. And then I'll go and I will lay down and get some sleep here. Head to the port side and just start wandering the deck until I hear something signal me if that happens. And I will pour some cow drops underneath, like around the edge of the uh, my seat in case somebody gets real close, they'll step on us. Okay, if you fall out of the seat, ow. <laughs> yep, no problem. So I'll strap. I'll there's a seatbelt. I'll strap myself. All right. Um. So, Tusk. And now, first off, Allie, you're just kind of following Tusk back and forth. Yeah, just assume I I'm having issues uh, with how I'm seeing the map too. So okay. I'm just following Tusk. Okay. Um, I say I can at least for yours. I know I can do the the whole light thing, so you can actually see. Uh, compared to not being able to see at all. Yeah, I can see everybody. <clears throat> um, there's uh, Tusk, as you get closer towards the back of the boat there, um, you notice Dante has kind of snuck out and walks up near you and um, kind of signals to you to follow him towards the uh the center mast and he kind of steps he'll follow he steps on the other side of it so he's kind of obscured from where uh barney is and from where the the captain's quarters are why the hush hush from your and um he stays hush hushed by the way rather than the you know the big fake smile patronizing tone and all that um he says look um, Adam plans to kill all of you before the end of this trip. And he just, he wants to make the crew larger by incorporating you into the crew. But I think he's done enough bad stuff recently that if you're willing, I think we could overthrow him. Well, one, he's not going to kill us. We'll make sure that doesn't happen. Oh, uh, oh, he'll, he'll kill you. You can try. Because half of the other guys will fight with him uh secondly um he's we're on we're paying here why does he want to kill us does he just want to eat us or what's his deal he's just gonna take what you have and throw you overboard Hmm. except for you because he thinks you'd make a good addition to the crew well that's not gonna happen i take it you want to help us that's why you're doing this I think um, some of us are sick of what's been going on here, and uh, we think you might be a good opportunity to get rid of Adam. Because we can't is... fight against him, and we're just kind of hoping you can take care of it. Do you know when this is supposed to take place? Uh, you guys will be killed tomorrow, most likely. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Hmm. You know, you guys... wink, wink, when the moon is more full. Do you guys have a handle on your transformation or is this just like mine just random um it's not really random but adam is the pack leader and everyone pretty much does what he says Hmm. we have a ranking and um i'm in the lower half find out who's willing to stand up against him and we will definitely have your back and we can solve this problem for you the problem is pack rules forbid us from fighting the leader, so we kind of need you to do it. We can cheer you on, and we won't. Some of us won't fight you, but we can't fight against Adam. Well, if he wants me alive, then I'll take care of him. Well, he wants you alive, so you can be part of the crew. You, I know. You haven't seen the animal he can become. He hasn't seen the animal I can become. Good comeback, bro. Tusk isn't the brightest, but uh, he just snarls a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for the uh, warning. We'll do our best to take care of this. Um, if you've got an idea of when you think you're going to do something, you've uh, you got to let myself know um, and Emmett or Fenton, uh, but don't, for the love of all that is evil, don't talk to anyone else. Will do. Image Fenton. 
take note of uh, the names that... Uh, so I, I made it easy for myself to keep track of them, and I'll let you guys in on the, the slight kind of secret that I used to make it easy for myself. Uh, there are six of them, and their names start with A, B, C, D, E, and F. Ah, clever. So it let me know who the alpha, beta, etc., right down the line. And those are, in order, the size of them and their stature. So what happens if we do take him out? Who becomes the new alpha? Um, well, uh, I can tell you that Emmett and Fenton have seen the strength in you, and we'd be willing to follow you. Not but, really looking to take on a crew. But we definitely don't want Barney or Clayton in charge of the, the boat. Plus, we still need to find a uh, Greg and a <laughs> Frederick uh, before we get to T. Yeah. <laughs> Tusk. You'd be renamed, buddy. Oh, we are going to finish. Instead of Tusk, you'd be like Antler. <laughs> uh, so so he, you know, he, um, he keeps watching behind him to make sure Barney doesn't see him there. Uh, but more than once, he glances over to where Emmett is, and they just exchange a knowing glance. The same kind of glance you got when he turned and looked at you. It's one of those kindred spirit type of things. And um, after a few more moments, he says, look, I got I to gotta get back to sleep before anybody notices something's going on. That's fine. Go ahead and go. And he slings off in the darkness back to his um, little cot on the side of the um, the back area. Hopefully he doesn't trip over Alistair on the way there. No, She's no. very actively trying to stay out of the way. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Allie, I, Allie, you definitely heard all of that. Tusk, you definitely heard all that. He was going to say, uh, you caught all that, right? <laughs> that man say for the love of everything evil was a very curious note for me as well. I almost brought that up, but there wasn't a lot of time to chit-chat. I just want to double-check. All I want to know, or all I all I know is that uh, he doesn't want us dead at this moment in time, so... I don't know if I trust you hanging around these boys, Tusk. I am plan on hanging out with whoever's paying me at the time, and uh, until that contract's done, I do not serve anyone else. So, no worries on my end. Nice. Um... Unless you guys want to do anything else, we can call it a long rest and everybody up in the morning. Tusk wants to accident or launch uh, all set on this cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Time me to a harpoon. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Uh, yeah, long rest is fine. Actually, I think it'd be awesome to... The, the idea of tying him to a harpoon... Was just I thought it was hysterical. Uh, set him on there. Put his uh, hand, his own hand, at the trigger, and once he turns, he can you know hit the trigger accidentally, and poof, off he goes. I was evil the whole time. Whoa. No. <laughs> oh man! So we've got uh, morning. They uh, ah. they bring out um, rations that you guys can eat. And these are kind of like the granola rations, some salted fish, um, some cured meats, what have you. Nothing outrageous. What you might expect for on deck, no, no meal preparing. Um, mainly because, as we already discussed, their cargo hold is full. So there's really no galley for them to prepare anything in. They pretty much fill the whole boat right up to the deck with um, the lumber that they're selling. So it's a new day, and you're all like, well ah, yeah. all right. Well, everything seemed like it was all right. Yeah. Um, oh, Ali Tusk. Um, how did things go last night? We have a problem. And you keep calling me old man, so I'm going to throw you. <laughs> 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 We've discussed your demise, good sir. They are indeed all Leganthrope werewolves. Um, Adam is the alpha. And he plans to kill us tonight. Uh, to clarify, there are by us. He means everyone. Everyone except him. myself. <laughs> what? So, so he wants to kill all of us here. Yes, and they want to throw your bodies overboard and take your things, oh, and God. try to get me to work with them. 
Well, that sounds most most discouraging here. Um, is all set with us here? Or is he still sleeping over by his? Or is he waking up over by his thing? Yeah. Uh, is all set going to go eat with everyone else? Uh, no, I'm still gonna. I'm gonna make sure I get this thing working as fast as possible. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I mean, what what do what what's the plan then here, Tusk? I mean, should we just go and confront this man now? Or well, so we... far, I've only had a warning. So uh, Adam has not tried to be buddy buddy with me yet. So that's interesting. So maybe far. maybe you go be buddy buddy with him, and then we just you know get rid oh, of him. He plans to it kill you guys today just so you know well, I, yes I, I, I figured that here and that's why i'm saying we should probably move faster than today to get rid of him uh just so you know emmett uh fenton and dante who warned me is uh, all on our side they cannot oh. do anything to attack their leader because he is their alpha mm-hmm. but uh once adam is taken care of if we focus just on him the others will fall in line all right so i mean ali what, what do you think about this here do you think we should I mean, you have very little options. So what is the option then, Allie? So if the truth is being told here, and I'll mention about the for the love of everything evil and how that was particularly suspicious to not being biased here, but a paladin. um, (laughs) I'm definitely more than a little concerned. It is very difficult to take this at its word, but it's urgent enough to where you kind of have to think about it. Okay, all right. One other issue, a latter issue, uh, is that Dante used the words um, "all thing of all things evil." Or how how was it worded, Alistair? For the love of everything. For the love evil. of everything evil. Ah. Um, so they may not be on the up and up as well, but I think we worry about the one trying to kill all right us. so i mean do we do first. do we need to challenge do you need to challenge him to like you know fisticuffs what how did how does a alpha become an alpha here i'm not really sure on packs here i mean is it like a dance battle do you have to win the hearts and minds with a rousing it's, it's a rap battle <laughs> it's a rap battle oh my goodness, yeah. oh my goodness. <laughs> should we all do a history check and see what we know about <laughs> I, i'm more cards. than happy to history or nature because i think werewolves are in a way natural Okay. Let's see what I'm best at. And this will be everyone Where's... except Alset at this point. Yes. Because Alset, although is uh, he's sure that there's something going on, um, he hasn't been that's part of what has been discovered. The natural yeah. twenty plus two for me. Yeah, yeah. that's a that's eighteen a lot. plus three is twenty. So it, so it is a rap battle. Oh my goodness! It is. And is Ali going to make a werewolf check? Um. I'm going to do it unskilled, but here we go. Werewolf lore check. Look at that. Everybody didn't do much uh, much bads. Um, as a matter of fact, Marty, um, mm-hmm. in he thinking about it, it and how much you didn't know, you realized, you know what? I think I do know this. And oh, it is, it is um, if the alpha is challenged in one-on-one battle, it is a one-on-one battle. Otherwise, uh-huh. you just have to find a way to defeat him. Must but there is an honor system. There is an honor system of a one-on-one duel, typically to the death. Um, if it's not to the death, it has to be agreed upon ahead of time. Uh, but if the if the challenger challenges the alpha directly, then it's a one-on-one battle, and there shall be no interference. Oh, all right, Tusk. I mean, this is this is some heavy stuff here, my man. Uh, what do you think here? Do you feel like you can take this alpha by yourself, or do you think that we should all... Now, is this like a to-the-death thing, typically, or...? It needs to be yes. decided on, usually. Yes, uh, it's typically to the death, yeah. Allie. As you know, I am half-orc uh, by trade, so if I... Uh, by trade. By, tra- by, tra- by trade. <laughs> by trade. By, by, by life. <laughs> so if I am to fall, I will not fall for long. I will get back up. But if I am to fall... All the cards would be off the table at that point. I would really like some assistance <laughs> if I get straight up mauled. <laughs> if I fail my second death saving throw, I would like yeah, help. <laughs> looking, looking at um, at Alpha here, and again seeing him wandering on the deck for the past day or so, do yeah. I get the sense that Tusk would have a uh, a chance against him on one on one, or do I think that it'd be, he'd be too out of his range? Let me bring him back out onto the boat um, in his usual spot. 
Uh, yeah, add them up there. What I mm. need there is, I'd say perception or insight would be insight, fine. Insight, I think insight. Yeah. Insight would be the way to go, I think. 12, so yeah. Mm. So <laughs> he definitely, without a doubt, his stature is at least that of Tusk. He seems seems to be, I wouldn't say hiding it, but he is wearing the, uh, you know, puffy pirate shirt kind of thing. Oh. Um, so he's not, you, you can't see his rippling muscles and stuff, right? But he's definitely a large fellow. Well, he, he doesn't have the best fashion sense here, Tusk, old man. I think you definitely <laughs> win in that round, as I, I'm sure Tusk is still wearing the cloak that I gave him. Um but, uh, I mean, what do you think here? With the Tusk digs into his bag and starts pulling out the plate mail that uh, he took off that one guy back in the cave. Oh. I think this might uh, assist in this uh, situation. All right, all right. So I don't usually do armor, but if you're that worried... Well, I mean, I, I mean, I, I've come to care for both of you here. I mean, you have been two of the best interns I've ever had, and uh, I would be ashamed to see you, you know... Uh, paid. Look, you guys are keeping me too busy to die, so uh, oh. I'll make sure. I'll make sure I don't. All right. So, so I mean, it sounds like I mean, Ali. It sounds like Tusk is is wanting to do this on his own. What do you think here? She'll kind of fold her arms and tap her foot. Fine. All right. Is there one against one or four against four? So. I mean, I, I, I mean, Tusk, I will have your back, old man, here, if you want us to go into battle with you. I trust you guys could easily take care of uh, the others, but if we, can, if we can deal as little bloodshed as possible, he is an alpha, they are not exactly in the full mindset, as I'm su- assuming werewolves uh, can change the mind of their lessers, as, as it were. An alpha can control them and make them do things they wouldn't necessarily do. So. All right, all right. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll wave over at, at Allset and uh, try to see if I can get him to come over here and talk with us for a minute. He waves you to come to him instead. <clears throat> that, that man, I swear to God, here. All right. Well, I guess we'll just surprise also with what's about to happen then. Uh, I'll just go with them just in case. I don't know when they're going to attack. All right, well, we have your back, old man. If you say the word, we will jump in there and we will, uh, you know, maybe just flee, you know, and if we need to. But, I mean, we will try to give them a good show. Indeed. I'll walk over and I'll be like, Ali, um, maybe we should take a look at the uh, skate boat situation. That might be smart. All set still uh, tinkering. Oh, yes, he's still... Let, let, let the man tinker. Yeah, how far have I gotten on this thing? Uh, You've gotten about halfway. You need another day, and you can probably finish it up. Uh, probably about this time tomorrow. I, I was looking at it as something that was going to take most of the trip, so probably five right. days, and then you rolled whatever it was, a 20-something, and I'm like, all right, I'll cut it in half, two and a half days, and you got right. it. Um, but, yeah, there you go. So you've got you probably got another day before you would say it's fully operational. As gotcha. it is, it's still kind of usable. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to be able to use it later if possible, in case we need to. <laughs> as long as I can spin it and point it on things on the deck, that's what I want to get it to before, you know. Yeah, I mean... I definitely want that. So, let's have... Go ahead with your conversation, Marty, and, and I'll sit. Oh, is he coming over here to actually talk to us now? Oh, I thought oh, you no, were, I'm I thought somebody was going over there to talk to him. Sorry. No, he waved to me. I told I told him to come to me. He said, "Come to him," and I'm like, "No, screw you. We're, we're going to stay over here." <laughs> so in that case, with I mean, with, if you get within thirty feet of me, we can just chat in our heads. <laughs> so, so so me and Allie, we're going to go check out the lifeboat situation. Yeah. So the towards the back of the boat, and let me do let me do the whole clever then, horrible drawing thing again, and yeah, I'll give and you the, an idea. And then as we're walking around here, do they have a bunch of the um? the lumber up on deck, like stacked up, like how lumber usually is like, is it secure? Is it, how secured is it? It's it, almost everything is below deck. There's hardly okay, anything so the, above, so deck. Uh, above deck is more along the lines of, um, uh, think of your stereotypical. There's a couple of barrels here. There's a crate over there, that kind of thing. But hmm. the lumber itself is pretty much all down. 
Now, where yeah. I've just drawn those two red shapes on the map towards the back yeah. of the boat, <clears throat> those are the two canoes back there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And neither one of them is an accurate shape. They should both be canoe-shaped. Those are yeah. hastily yeah. drawn mouse figure shapes. Yep. Um, all right. Ali, do you think that, the, that we can launch these things here in a hurry in case things go wrong? Um, can I kind of like... Yeah, take a, take a look at them, maybe a little perception. What I'm looking for mostly is the answer is yes, if you're a, uh, a seaman, a deckhand, somebody who actually knows how to quickly untie that knot. Uh, you do not know how to quickly, <laughs> with, with a roll of a six, you do not have a, what is Randy doing? Uh, I'm just checking out some stuff on my PC exactly. Okay. I'm like, what are, what are we looking at there? Um, the the knots are definitely the kind of knot that you have not experienced uh, previously, and you're not sure if pulling on that would make it tighter or looser or what, but because they are most likely an emergency sort of vessel, like a lifeboat, there must be a way that they come off quickly, and you surmise that it might just be, you know, sword to the rope for you. I'll be honest with you, dear. Uh, this isn't my forte, um, but I'd reckon uh, if we get into a situation, I've got daggers, you've got daggers, we could just, you know. All right, fine, all right. Let's fine. call the whole thing off. Yeah, all done. I can't undo this knot. Forget it. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, let's uh, let's head back to see Tusk here. Is, is Tusk getting ready to challenge the person now, or are we doing it later? Uh, Tusk is uh, just putting on the plate as you guys uh, are busy, which takes a long time from what I've read. <laughs> it's like 10 minutes, I think, yeah, to yeah, properly don yeah. plate armor. If, 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 if I see him doing the plate armor, <clears throat> I, I would then go over to all set and then let him know everything that's going on, that we're going to be killed <laughs> today if Tusk can't stop this person and become the new alpha. And he's putting on armor on a ship? That sounds crazy. <laughs> it's to help I'm him sink to... faster. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, right I, glove I, I thought, goes on the left. Hand. <laughs> I thought he could move. I thought he could move no. faster without armor. I thought so too, but I mean, he's 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 all all, all security. So I leave the the judgment to him as far as what he does. Uh, if I can get this thing working, maybe I could use it to uh, you know, take a shot at Adam. Hmm. I look at the the ballista thing. Does it look like it's big enough and like heavy? Like if it has enough force to launch somebody if they were tied to it off the ship? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. It, it's designed, um, think more like harpoon, it's designed to go at least 100 feet and still penetrate um, a large marine animal um, and then be able to pull it back to the boat. So it's definitely sturdy enough to, to launch something, at least the 20 feet it would take to get over the side of the boat. Tusk gets frustrated with this uh, armor's fit and just like kicks it <clears> off. It's like, oh, no, I can't move in that. Like a baby with socks. You um, you do notice Tusk that Clayton has uh, been watching you a fair amount while you're while you were trying the armor on, and you see a little snicker on his face as you kick it away. Oh, sorry, Clayton. We got this a few days ago, and I was curious how well it fits, and I don't like it. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that um. Doesn't go well on boats anyway, you know. You sink like a, a lead weight there. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but hey, it was pretty. Yeah, it's got these emblems all over it. We might sell it or uh, pawn it off later. Who knows? <laughs> and you catch, just because you've got this kind of link with them now, you catch the little look that he gives to Adam right before he just goes back to work. And, you know, that... You, you realize that look is part of a, um, yeah, that's going to be part of our treasure later kind of look. <laughs> now, all set, I'm going to give you a 50-50 shot of being oh, able to use it the way you want. Otherwise, it's going to be stuck in one position, and you will roll with disadvantage when you use it. No good. <clears throat> so let's go, let's do an odd or even roll. You pick what it is before you roll. And of course, roll any die you like, as long as it is an even number of sides. 
<laughs> Don't go rolling a d1 and call odds. <laughs> Have one of those in you can you can just tell it to roll whatever you want but yeah we're not gonna do that all right uh i want odd all right roll whatever die you like 100 <laughs> those it's 20 24. it's an even number no matter how you look number, at yeah, it. <laughs> Uh, whether it's four and 20 or 20 and four or 240 or, or 42 <clears throat> okay Add so together at six of screw. The only way you're able to get it so it's pointed towards the boat is if you lock it in place. And you can definitely do that while you're working on it. Um, but it won't be movable. And that's where I'm saying when you go to use it, you will use it as a disadvantage because you really can't aim it well. Okay. Okay. So you do have it where you can use it pointed at the boat, though. The... Um, the next step is really what do you guys want to do? I mean, come lunchtime, they take kind of rotating breaks where um, Dante, Emmett, and Fenton will kind of walk by you guys while, you know, uh, ripping bits of their uh, beef jerky off and chewing on them. And, you know, Dante more than once uh, gives this little knowing nod to Tusk like, you the man, man. Tusk nods back. Okay. So, um, yeah, throughout the lunch hour-ish, you know, around midday, you've got those guys seemingly more encouraging, where the others are more like uh, looking at what you're carrying and what you've set on the ground and, you know, what kind of jewelry you might be wearing and, and your items and stuff like that. The other ones are looking way more interested in the stuff you've got rather than who you are. Show me what you've got. <laughs> Call back to uh, the other podcast. The other. <laughs> ah. So how are you guys going about the rest of the day? Um, presumably before it gets dark and you Tusk die. Tusk is going to uh, have been, after he kicked the armor off, sharpening up uh, his blades. Okay. Yeah, is he gonna... uh, just preparing for the next adventure. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'd like to mention, like, hey, like, do this right now. You know, don't wait till nighttime. Yeah. Get this going. Like, a ASAP, man. <laughs> I don't need any werewolves going on. Does he tell that to Marty or anyone else? Tusk is keeping an eye on them so they don't jump you guys or anything right away. No, so. we would need this. To, you need to. Are you, you whispering this in my right head? Or what you... uh, whatever it takes. You need to challenge him right now or else I'm going to start lighting people up. <laughs> uh, can you hear back in your. Uh... Yes, okay. I get the okay. Yeah, I get the yeah. All right, then I'll do it. All right. Well, Actually, since you pay the uh, the uh, mortgage, I don't have a house. I don't know what I'm talking <laughs> about. I sleep in a tent. Anyway. <laughs> Adam! That was almost Miles. Anyway. That was nice. Uh, he he kind of slowly looks towards you. He's got the uh, big patronizing smile on his face, and he says, yes. How I can I help you, sir? I know what you're planning. Let's settle this now. Uh, settle what? Don't play dumb with me. I'm dumb enough for both of us. <laughs> I think you're right, buddy. Probably true. Yeah, you know, the plan is just to get you guys to Belshire and continue our route to Fairhaven. I think the plan is to drop my friend's bodies in the water in about four hours, isn't it? That's silly talk. Hmm. It's not what I hear. Werewolf. Um, his smile falters for a moment, but just a moment. Yeah. Challenged you once before. Are you just gonna man up now, or are you just gonna stand there and act dumb? Well, what's your challenge? You wanna the, arm wrestle again? <laughs> here you're the alpha, so uh, let's see about knocking you down a few pegs. Well, if you want an official challenge, my friend, that's to the death. No pegs involved. I know what's going on. I know what the deal is. Let's get this started. <clears throat> Where do you want to die? Up there or down here? 
I've already got my death figured out. It won't happen for a few more years. However, let's move towards the front of the boat. You we'll clear out plans, of space. They change. The one that talked to Tusk was Dante, right? Yeah. And okay. Tusk isn't selling him out just in case things go south. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna scooch over to Marty and kind of nudge mm-hmm. him a little bit. Yes, yes, Ellie. Um, just in case, I'd like us to keep an eye on Dante as well as oh, okay. of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Um, hmm. So well, I'm I'm she's gonna not old woman. <laughs> I'm gonna set these guys up, kinda. Um, so bear with me while I'm moving them around a little bit, but um, Rawr. I'm gonna put. <clears throat> them kind of how they want to be my lazy bear. <laughs> watching what's going on. Um, Emmett stays up towards the front of the boat to just keep an eye out. Um, they don't drop anchor or anything. And pretty much the, the front of the boat in between where these guys are. So you see Adam, Barney, and Clayton are kind of on the left-ish, and then the other three are on the right. They clearly know that there's a divide in the ranks. Um, Tusk, you see this easily. There, everything falls in line with what you were seeing and hearing from him. Um, the from Bar, from uh, Dante, that is. <clears throat> and you know, Adam had shouted a couple orders. They moved a few things out of the way. You know, barrels and crates are all moved towards the edge. And this area that I've set up here is kind of open. And um, Adam goes over there. Um, well, let me rephrase. Before he goes over there, he grabs a longsword out of his office and then, you know, kind of jumps over the edge in an incredibly athletic and acrobatic um, display of agility and then saunters his way still, over there. Um, <laughs> he saunters his way over there, kind of waving the sword nonchalantly in the air. Uh, all right, and then uh, I'll be, uh, before before anything goes, I'll be, uh, so Ali, do you want me to make you invisible again? Maybe you can stay next to Dante or get closer to him, and I can keep uh, Tusk here hyped up. I'll be his uh, his hype man. What do you think? In broad daylight, I think that might be a little bit suspicious. What do you be They're... invisible though? Yes, but if they all of a sudden can't find one of us while this is all going down, I think they might get a little uncomfortable. I, know that. I, th- I think that they're going to be so engrossed in the combat they won't notice. Because hmm. right now when they're going around, they're setting things up. Here, does it look like they're watching us at all, or they're just are they are they're all focused on getting things for this fight, Joe? Um, it, it's a it's a half and half thing. You're not you're not free of scrutiny at any given time. Somebody's always looking at somebody else. Um, remember specifically for Marty, you know that. Uh, no interference is allowed in the battle mm-hmm. or all bets are off, right? Yeah. So yeah. they're keeping an eye on you guys for sure. Right. Yeah. So yes. Allie's afraid that because of that, that they're well, no interference, but, I'm, but I'm not, I know Allie doesn't want to interfere with the fight. She wants to keep an eye on Dante. Yeah, and that's fine. I mean, I am sure with an easy enough stealth roll between the two of you um, that you could find a way to cast invisibility without being detected, so to speak. Well, it's up um, to you, Allie. It's, I, I, yeah. I, I was, we can always just uh, hang back here and keep him, keep an eye on him in plain view. But I thought maybe it might give us a tactical edge if, uh, if say for example, things go ill. Are the um, is all the like food and dishes and stuff still out? I mean, there's a couple of things where you guys are, but they were just kind of walking around eating food, so not not outside of the um, guest quarters, the impromptu guest quarters you guys are staying in. Allie will speak up a little bit and ask if uh, Marty wants to help her clean up the space that they've so graciously put out for them. Of, of course, yes, Ellie. I would be much, okay. much delight to help you clean things up. I'm very good at cleaning things up. Just to kind of get them out of the way a little bit. Mm-hmm. Sure. And then, yeah, she'll, she'll go down with that. Okay. okay. All right, so then I'll, I'll wait until I, we go, like, around a corner, and then I'll just... So Casting give me give me a stealth roll with advantage, please. Who, me or Alex? Yeah, you, because you'll be the one casting. You gotcha. want to disguise your casting as much as possible. If she just yeah. goes okay. invisible, that should be easy enough if, you know, you're behind a, the mast or whatever, right? Gotcha. Ooh, that's oh, yeah. a... Yeah. yeah, that's a 22. Yes. 
So Casting. easy enough, you're able to just make it look like you're walking past the main mast or something, and as you walk out the other side, Allie's not there anymore. Excellent. Easy enough. She climbed up for a better view. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And then uh, I will just come out and I will try to row- give a rousing speech about Tusk and, uh, you know, very, very much like his, uh, his hype man getting him pumped hype up for man. the fight. All right. Tusk. Any specific terms? that you wish in case you die well I think to make it fair you should have help but you know that's against the rules so I think we should both um, as they say what is it roll initiative I think I will tell you your terms then I will keep your most loyal alive my terms will be you keep my men alive and you take them to safety be at the closest island or wherever, just do not kill them. So let me reiterate to you, pal. The the terms here are, um, if I, I win, you die. And if you win, I die. What happens after that is of no concern to the dead person. I'm just trying to look out for my friends, as you should look out for your... I guess you're not too friendly with all of them. So I'm going to go with... Uh... Tools. Tools. <laughs> Your group of tools, man. Um, it's time to roll an initiative. Initiative! Yeah. Kick the music. But only ah. only Tusk and um, Adam at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to cast Thaumaturgy on myself and just be like, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at 380 pounds of rippling hairy and kind of green muscles. We have the terror from down under. Tusk. And I'll start like chanting Tusk over and over and again. Trying to get him pumped up. Yeah, cool. All right. So guess what, Tusk? Um, You won the initiative. All right. So Tusk is going to immediately burst into a rage, which his black hair stays black, but his green shines a bright shimmer of green. So I'm going to click this rage button. And I'm also going to go into a frenzy use ability, yes. Going into a friend uh, zone? Is that what you said? Yes, a friend mm-hmm. zone. I'm going to put Adam in the friend zone with my frenzy. Uh, now, the way this will work, if anybody else wants to take an action, of course, you may. And you may take an action whenever you want. You can break into the initiative to do so. It will just violate the terms of a proper werewolf alpha duel. Mm-hmm. That's all. I'm not going to stop anyone from making any actions. That's all up to you. Allie's pretty much just going to keep a close eye on Dante and Emmett. Okay. Do, 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 do you want to move Allie over to that area, please? Uh, let me... Oh, hey, yeah. Yeah, I can... Yeah. Yeah, I can see now. Yeah. And that'll give me an idea of where you are if something does... Yeah. If slash when something does occur. Uh, would you I like... tell Alistair not to stand there. <laughs> like the... Wait, which... Oh, the cow trap's still up? No, you can't. You can't she, see her though. She, she is she, invisible she's invis- though. She's invisible. Yeah. Well, I would say. You would say <laughs> yeah. you can see. Well, then you know you might have a harpoon in your back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you did aim it, right? Yes. So yeah. I mean, Allie would see the pointed harpoon uh, pointed directly at her if she stood in front of it. I mean, I think that would be easy enough. Yeah. Tusk. Okay. You're so up, buddy. Tusk went into a rage, and then he went into a frenzy. Uh, should be able to do those back to back. I don't see any reason why not. Um, since I think they're both passive, right? Well, t- uh, rage is a bonus action. Frenzy doesn't say, I don't think. You can, it's, it's, so you can rage regularly, or you can make a frenzied rage. Uh, ra- a frenzy is passive. So, yeah, I can do both. So you can choose how to do it, but you only have a limited amount of usage of frenzy rage before you have to rest again. Yes, yes. I Um, I forgot to switch my token. Bear with me for a moment here. I'm going to use the werewolf Adam, not the uh, regular dude Adam who has no hit points or armor class. (laughs) Oh, man. You should should use that guy. (laughs) This would Um, go so so much easier. Yeah. 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 And I, and while while you're doing that, Joe, I'm going to lean over to Barney and be like, after I've done, you know, with my my deeper voice with thaumaturgy, I'm like, "Um, so do you have a, you want to take a friendly wager? I'd bet a hundred. I bet a hundred gold on my man tusk here. Man tusk. Mm-hmm. 
What do you say? Are you a sporting fellow? Uh, who are you asking? Sorry. <laughs> Bar- I'm, I'm, I'm talking to Barney after I Barney? just hyped up the crowd. Yeah. Oh, um, Barney gives you a distinctly animal growl and dismisses you. And then I, I, I in thaumaturgy, I will growl back with my tiefling, my tiefling <laughs> uh, uh, visage on that. And, and right. my turn for some reason. Um, your turn should still be on. Um, he just got, and let me just switch it back to your turn anyway. There. Um, he, uh, when he I re rolled, I girl. gave him, a, he got a higher initiative. That's all, but no, no big deal. It's your turn. Okie dokie. Uh, so I am going to uh, close the distance, and uh, he seems to have moved back a few feet, so I have to close even more distance. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Only because I swapped the token, but yeah, it's slash, close enough. Slash at him with the uh, great axe. All right. Uh, right. I should have a bonus on attack. I think rolls with the uh, rage. I don't know. Um, yeah. Who knows about uh, the the two. rage and barbarian attacks? It's, and, it's already added on there. So oh, I didn't click them. Dang it! I forgot. And you, you also have advantage on attack rolls while you're frenzy, uh, but but you get attack. Twenty four hit. By the way, because I did not click on my. I, it hits. Go ahead and roll I the damage. The, I attack the error, so you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have advantage on your attack rolls with frenzy, but they have a t- advantage on you, so you have. So. Yeah, uh, he so has advantage that. on me, uh, so uh, I can do. I think two attacks. Is it? With, yeah. Uh, you, my next turn. Yeah, with your next turn, and then you have a plus two plus your proficiency plus your uh, your your bonus on your attack. So it's already added it down there, I believe, for the yeah. attack roll. And with raging, I have uh, I have. Uh, What's it called? Uh, I not damage as much by bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. I have resistance. You have resistance, yeah. yeah. Do you have a magical or silvered weapon that you are using? Uh, no, they are all just regular weapons. Huh. Unfortunately, I do not have anything magical on me. But I am a barbarian, and old D&D magical items hurt barbarians. I don't know if that's still a thing. They didn't hurt them, they just didn't like using them. Okay. Yeah, um, so you're using your great axe. Yes, I don't have anything magical. So the, um... Yeah, nobody does. You you hit him, but the slash doesn't appear to affect him at all. Interesting. That doesn't make sense. Well, um, Marty, in thinking about werewolfosity, might remember that, um, the he may have damage immunity to non-magical and non-silvered weapons. Hmm. Well, this is a conundrum, considering I have... Is that in werewolf that mode or normal human mode? Um, he is switched over. He, I mean, he's in, call it hybrid mode now, where he can uh, okay. use claws, bites, um, sword, what have you. <clears throat> that was part of what I meant to say when I was switching the token around, but he definitely is taking advantage of being a werewolf at this point. Joe, did you send me into a battle I can't win whatsoever? Uh, no, I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I assure you, it was not my choice. It was just a choice I gave. Um, and, I don't know. I have you... that platinum knife. I don't know if that's special at all. Uh, you might want to try using it. <laughs> that's what I'm going to try next. Okay. I didn't do anything. So, his turn. I mean, give me just a second. Didn't you uh, just get a fancy schmancy weapon from the cave? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I got armor because everyone else took all the weapons. Oh, I didn't get that dagger or that yeah. uh, um, rape. Uh, what is it called? The the dueling weapon, that fencing weapon. Um, rapier. Was there a rapier? You I thought there was that. a scimitar. Scimitar. Oh, it was a scimitar. I thought it was. A... Yeah. yeah. Something that was really easy to. Uh... He was very dodgy, so I thought it was. Uh... Yeah, I, I, I found that. I gave that to somebody else. Um, sounds like you may have given it to Tusk. Because uh, Randy I, seems I, to remember it. I gave like it to Allie or I gave it to Tusk. I just remember I killed two at the very start. One had the torch hmm. and the other one had another weapon that was. I thought he was fencing me. So I thought it was... Uh... Yeah. Scimitar. It, it made me look really super cool with it. But I gave that to either Allie or Tusk when uh, happened. I believe it was Allie. Cause yeah, well, I, Allie just wanted two-handed stuff. Yeah, so then I then, then it went to Tusk then. That's right, because the scimitar was, um, yeah. we were trying to see if it was versatile or not. Yeah, and it was not, so. All right. Well, Tusk um, gladly have taken it. He tried to take an axe earlier, but Ali is interested in it, so we gave it to her. So, yeah. I well, guess he would have that scimitar then. With that in mind, <laughs> he's going to, 
The thing is, I only uh, on this character, I only have spear, but it should be long sword. So it's going to say spear when I attack you, but it's actually a long sword. Um, let me, I didn't, I didn't actually target you. Same thing that you just didn't do for me, but 18 hits you, right? Yes. I okay. have no armor. So, yeah. So I'm going to do the six points of damage to you. Do resistance to Three slashing. Because it's slashing, unless it's, unless it's something else. Um, it's it is slashing, it. yes, but it is a magical slashing weapon. Does that count against... That's the DM's call, then. I, I think, I mean, that's... For the barbarian, it's non-magical, right? It is slashing, bludgeoning, piercing, non-magical damage that you have resistance to. Yes, I believe so. I'll have to double-check, but... Uh, if you are able to... It just says resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Yeah, this. so I said it's a, it's a DM call because it doesn't specify. Okay, in this case, then yes, you have it. So three points. Um, I will add three back on to that. I thought it was non-magical, but that's cool. Yeah, it doesn't Is specify. Is that frenzy so. instead of rage, maybe? No, it's rage. It's it a rage. Is? Okay. Oh, just more. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Right, scroll up. Yeah. Since Scrolling's okay. Cast, your rage lasts one minute and ends early. Once you have rage a number of times shown, preparing. Hold on, I'm just skimming through this. Yeah, sure. good. It, 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 again, it said it doesn't specify. It's a DM call with magical weapons. Yep. Okay, yeah, that's what it seems. It's yep. Tusk's turn now. Tusk's gonna glance at his axe during that split second and be like, "That didn't work," and then toss it and uh, pull out that scimitar. That I'll we catch discussed. the. I'll, ta- I'll catch the axe like in the crowd. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I hope this works <laughs> instead. Uh, I don't have that in my thing, so uh, should I just roll the? How do I? What should I roll? Let's um, let's. Uh, what do you have as a? I have a great club and a great axe in my list of items. Um, I'm not sure. my echo heard that for some reason. Um, and told me it's not sure. The uh. Alexa, play battle music. Yeah, yeah, thankfully I've got, you know, uh, earphone in, so that's not going to work, thankfully. (laughs) Um, Let me, you know what, Um, Marty, what kind of cheers are you giving for? Oh, I'm giving, I'm giving all the cheers for him. Me and Mage Hand, uh, Mage Hand is like clapping with me uh, as I'm uh, using thaumaturgy to still uh, call out the the, the blows and hype up uh, Tusk as best as I can. And what is um, what is uh, Allie doing at this point? So the same thing, just keeping a really close eye on uh, Dante and Emmett while the fight's going on. Cool. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the stalling so I can import this scimitar and give it to Tusk. So hmm. feel feel free to keep yeah. talking about all the yeah. exciting so, things. So, uh, Elsa, all... what are you doing? I'm uh, just making sure I could try to keep this thing aimed as much as possible on Adam so I can launch it into his face. Is that I'm, loud I'm, over, I'm over there just, I'm screaming, I'm screaming in multiple different variances of tone, like, Tusk, 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 we love Tusk, it's so good, oh my god, he's so, he's all that is mad. Like, trying to make it like there's a, a crowd of people behind you, Tusk. <laughs> all right, Randy, deselect Tusk, reselect Tusk, and look under inventory and see if you see Scimitar plus two. Uh, I don't know how to, de- oh, okay, I, I think I just, do we just click the, picture of the person you can click something different to select uh, <clears throat> and then you should have the scimitar in there to be able to use it i don't know how to okay so explain how to unselect myself i don't well really click a different Sorry. character all right so left click or right click uh regular left click Okay. And then click back on yourself. It's kind of like refreshing it. Because if you yeah. stayed selected on yourself, it doesn't uh, update until you select something else. And then back to yourself. Okay. <clears throat> so I've looked at my inventory on the thing itself. It says that it's there. And it's still not there in my inventory on my weapons. Uh, I think I need to equip it. I, I did that already. No, I can okay. see it from my side. I could roll for yeah. you, but you probably yeah. don't want that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, should I try refreshing the screen? Yeah, try it. 
Let's do that. Oh, man. Oh, man. We got time, right? Uh, moments, even. <laughs> All right. So who's got a uh, five-minute comedy uh, special <laughs> going? I didn't want to share with everybody. <laughs> I, can t- I can tell that uh, Aster does. You can tell by the ears. Uh, yeah, yes. totally. Yeah. I think I can fill about three minutes on cats. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> meow. Okay, meow. I have a placeholder for my uh, cat character on Jason's campaign on the other podcast called nice. Meowzabob. It's not going to be his real name, but Meowzabob is funny. <laughs> That's like kind of it. funny, yes. You like should Beals. just call him that. <laughs> mm. Bartholomew? Lord of Meow? Nice. It's better uh, than the Lord of the Dance, which was his other name. Meowzabob Bartholomew. That's cool. His is it refreshed yet? Uh, solid gray screen, Joe. Uh, <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> well, actually, I got the I got the anvil on the top left. But, uh, All right, that's about it's about normal for uh, old reliable there, Randy. Oh yes, old reliable is uh, one day getting replaced. I might yeah. try my other PC at some point in time. So you can definitely tell by the crew crowd that Barney and Clayton are. Uh, are practically salivating on the side of Adam after seeing that first great axe hit pretty much do nothing. Um, Dante and, and Fenton and Emmett don't necessarily look worried, but they're not smiling as widely yeah. as they were at the beginning of the battle. So I just I elbow Barney in, 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 in a very loud, like almost megaphone voice toward his ear, like, like, oh, my boy's just getting warmed up and uh, trying to be as <laughs> trying to be as annoying to him as possible. <laughs> um. I think uh, Barney at this point would probably look back at you instead of just growling and dismissing you would say, warm meat is better. And then I will light uh, my, my hellish flames will start to come up from my hellish rebuke. And I would be like, I'm too hot for you to handle my friend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. And he laughs along like humoring the situation. Like this is going to be so much fun. <laughs> Still a gray screen there, just a, just a little update. I got a little notice that says, this page is slowing down Firefox to speed up your browser. Stop this page. <laughs> but it's the one I'm trying to load, so why would I stop it? Outstanding, brother. So, we may have picked the wrong exemplar for this fight. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody, uh, or can oh, anybody wait, wait. else... It's a different shade of gray now. Oh, 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 oh here it goes. Oh. It's coming. Oh, it's oh. slowly coming, guys. Almost there. Stay on target. <laughs> Hopefully it isn't too many shades of gray, because well, now it's like four or five different shades of gray. But I see a list of names, and there's the boat. All right. Hey-o. So when you select have, Tusk, I still don't have my inventory and blah 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 yet. So. Okay. Well, it's okay. By next week, we will have been able to oh, actually we will, get we him will loaded nail up. It. Yeah. Well, guys, that was a great. Uh, stream. It was nice uh, <laughs> spending time with you guys. Thanks for tuning in to Adventures from the Stream. You know, I guess I could add a longsword to my uh, to Adam while we had a moment. <laughs> no, no, you're gonna you're gonna slow down Randy's computer even if it even more. <laughs> do I have to to, uh, to reset that? All right. So with uh, now taking place with um, what's it called? Uh, not rage. The other one, uh, frenzy. What was it? It was uh, it's two attacks or what is it? Yeah, like you, bonus, yeah. attack. bonus attack can be be, be an attack. Yep. Yeah. So your bonus, bonus. action, bonus okay. action, be attack. All right. So I will uh, first attack once. <clears throat> Normal. Nothing's happening on my. Screen. You target him this time. Oh, there goes it. Yeah, I, tar- I targeted him. Yes. Ooh. Oh, oh, you missed. Said, wow, he's got a lot. Okay, let's try again with the bonus action. You sure can. Let's see what we got for him, Johnny. Oh, uh, hey, oh. Guess, guess we're going to be swimming with the fishes soon. <laughs> All right. Can't, it was a fun campaign. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been worse. All right. Um, that's the end of your turn. Yes, uh, let me hit that little button. All right. Thank you for reminding me, Joe. Get Let's uh, switch him over to um, the uh, longsword attack. Oh, oh my. That one. I rolled a one, and it decided to a... still roll damage for some reason. Um, <laughs> Does he lose, lose hold of it and hit <laughs> Barney in the face? No, at, at this point, it's just um, 
he's he's kind of surprised at your strength and agility, I believe. And you've kind of taken him off guard a little bit. Um, your turn again. That's what I get for not wearing that stupid arm. <laughs> <laughs> Does that screw up your attack, though? It does. It's, it, yeah. it, screws up, it screws up all this. I want to click it twice. Oh, man, it doesn't let me do it if I do that. And yeah, don't forget, you have advantage on attacks because you're frenzied. Yeah. And Joe, you have advantage on attacks on him because he's frenzied. Yeah. I like if I roll a one first, I'm just going to take it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even give him a second attack or anything. And then Randy rolls a one. Outstanding. On the the first... battle that lasted never. All right, I'll use my bonus action to hopefully recover. Was <laughs> That's it... okay. Can I do that? Was that with advantage you rolled that? You got oh, two, uh, two ones? Is, is it advantage? or You didn't roll with advantage, right? You, you, sh you should have. No, it was just a regular one. I didn't know. Is it with advantage or is it just one attack? Oh, it's with a, what? It's What's with it? advantage? That's what Frenzy is. Okay. I did not realize that. I am. If you're I, going in the friend zone, you get an extra roll for you know advantage. <laughs> right? My bad. So it's one attack then and it's advantage. Okay. So we'll... Do that next time, then. Uh, just roll another regular normal attack. I can be reasonable. I thought it was another attack with a bonus action. I didn't know it was. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, you might be right. I'm thinking of yeah, reckless attack. Frenzy reckless is attack. The, that's true. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Frenzy. Okay. Well, never mind. Ignore me. Reckless. It's bonus attack. Reckless is the uh, advantage. Okay, yeah. so I very sloppily started to fumble my sword and then immediately smashed him in the face. With yeah, it. you did. And 10 points to him with that scimitar. All right. Does it actually do any damage? Yes, it did. Yeah, it went down a little bit. Yep. Because if not, I'm throwing his ass off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what you would have done in the first. Yeah. Um, all right. So is that the end of your turn? Bro, oh, dang it. Sorry, Joe. No problem. I just want to know because I didn't know what else you can or may do. I just want to uh, be sure. Um, and he attacks you again. Um. Yeah, very def deftly with the longsword this time. Definitely got you. Um, six points of damage there, and he follows it up with... Uh, down a three. Um, yeah, yeah, it should be... Uh, let me... Um, just do your next one, and then... Yeah, I'll and then I'll reduce half of the total, I guess. Oh, but he's... He, well, let me roll this one again, because he should have gotten advantage, right? Yes. If he's friend you're all frenzied. I'm frenzy. Yes, if you're in the friend zone, it makes them easier to hit you. All right. So it was a total of 11 damage, so I guess we'll do... Um, I'll take Fire. five back away. And so, yeah, so again, there's no advantage on that. My fall on that, Joe, so no one has advantage on this. It's a bonus attack for him. I was thinking of Reckless. Okay. I don't think I have that. No, I don't have it yet. No. <laughs> if I ever do. No, I have Reckless Attack. Okay. Oh, do you? Yeah, um, at second level, you can throw a small oh, concern. So at this point, um, you can see that, that Dante's got, um, Allie, you see that Dante's got more of a nervous look on his face. Like, he can see that Adam is, is clearly doing more damage to Tusk than Tusk is doing back. And um, the others back there, Barney and Clayton, are just... They're they're getting more and more maniacal in their smiles and and snorts and sounds that they're throwing out there. Tusk, your turn. Okay, so he already has uh, advantage on me. He can't have double advantage. So I'm going to use reckless attack for my first attack, since that's what it says I can uh, do. Uh, if I would read the whole details, it says starting at second level, you can throw aside all concern for defense to attack with fierce desperation. When you make your first attack on your turn, you can decide to attack recklessly. Doing so gives you advantage on melee uh, weapon attack rolls using strength during this turn. But attack rolls against you have an advantage. But since I, he already has advantage against me anyway because of frenzying, uh, it doesn't but, matter and it's just a bonus. Well, he, he doesn't have advantage on you because of frenzying. Uh, again, that was a mistake. I thought he did. No, that was a mistake. You don't have advantage on attacks unless you're reckless. And then he doesn't have advantage on attacks against you because you're frenzying. Oh, okay. Uh, we're getting there. Yeah, we're yeah, getting there. We're working on it. Yep. Let's do it anyway. I don't know why. You double reckless, I I, brother. I guess I just roll the attack and do it with advantage on the first one. Yeah. Time. So I'm going to roll with advantage with my reckless attack. <gasps> Oh, oh my gosh! A what one and a mother? two, oh. and that's got to be the end of the ones and twos. And you, you would hope. My uh, frenzy <laughs> with 
my other attack mm. and hopefully actually do something again. <laughs> hey! Oh! Crit! Hey, off his head. Uh, What's the thing for crit? crit? We're gonna oh, we're gonna uh, maximum the damage and see if that's what it does. It does. That's uh, three six. Okay. Yeah. It does. So she's three d six minimum six minimum six. Yep. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a second. Yes, yeah, when you square a critical hit, roll one of the dice an additional time and add it to the extra damage for savage attacks. Do I have savage attack? Yeah. Then I will do that. Everyone else is reading Randy's character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got to do? Make sure he uses when all you score stuff. a critical hit, roll one. Yes, indeed. I, Dude, we play so many games, I was not thinking. One more d6. All right. So okay. it should be a max. It should be another like full d6. It should be oh, another so it would be 30. Six. Yeah, it should be an extra six points damage. Okay, um, you didn't target him, so let me reduce the damage. Oh, I thought I had it. it he had it. it was hit high. He was highlighted, and now it's gone. Isn't it crazy? Yeah, it's, I'm gonna end my turn, and then you can just add that damage. Yeah, I got thirty. So now you hear the oohs and the ahs kind of switch sides between. Um, the ABCs and the DEFs. <laughs> it's like a, um, the Barney, his smile like half disappears and he gets, he, he has one of those like, oh, that not so good kind of things. And Adam doesn't seem to have liked that one bit. Uh, so he definitely has advantage this time. Yes, he didn't have it last time, but he still had it that you used, so I'm kind of wondering if you'd flip yeah. it, but, you know, it's up to you. He had it, didn't have it, had it, didn't have it. That's eh, all right. Just give it to him. I think I can take yeah, it. Yeah, he's going to have it. Um, Scatum is the fight right now. What, <laughs> what I'm trying to see is if I have an easy way to do advantage, and I, I really don't because of the auto roll to make it easier. He's just going to roll it, um, and I'm going to hit you, so I'm just going to let that hit go. Um, that's five and, and we'll do the, we'll reduce the damage after as well. So at a 15, um, we're going to, <clears throat> going back to Tusk here and I'll add the, uh, let's see, we'll add that back on. Is he okay. attacking twice or is that just yeah. the advantage? Okay. He is attacking twice and because it hit, I'm not going to go bother going with the advantage bit. Okay. Um, but yeah, he has two attacks and he's just, again, with this long sword, he's wielding it almost like it's a short sword or even a dagger. It's, it seems to move so easily in his hand and, uh, it's like, he's kind of toying with you, although he knows he's been damaged. His confidence is definitely shaken a little. Your turn, Tusk. Okay. Back to the old, uh, reckless attack and, uh, follow up with the frenzy attack as well. Because, uh, hopefully I can do better than a one of the two. Oh, gosh, yeah, that's that's better, and it's a hit. Ah, nice. Okay, damage. I said damage, not move when I'm clicking on you. Damage. All right, so five plus whatever, 11 damage for that one, and then I'll do my other attack, which disappeared for a second. All right. Attack. Normal. Oh, nice. Nice. Another good one. I'm glad we got those ones and twos out of the way. That was me knocking on wood. <laughs> <laughs> so, ten more there. And I will end my turn, because I... Unless I could headbutt him at this moment. But that is not... Oh, it's magical attacks. So. <laughs> I mean, you do it just for flavor. Yeah, magical face. Smack! The, um... He... He kind of takes a half step back to the side. Not enough to actually move a whole, you know, square in game terms, but... Oh, are you sure, you Joe? Can, you can see there's just this little bit of hesitation is what it translates to. You know, a step to the side, a step back a little bit, like he's lining up the next swing with the sword but Concede. doing so in a less aggressive manner than he began the fight. Like, he's thinking more about defense at this time, perhaps. And are you conceding, or are you still in this? Oh, he's there. He's there. He's not giving up yet. Because he can keep hitting you still. And yes, he can. Yep. 
And right. barring critical hits, he's got a shot. All right, so I'm going to roll again with because he's got advantage here. And see if the second one, yeah, second one does hit. So I had, um, it was five and, five and, and why isn't, why isn't it scrolling for me? It was five and six, eleven again. So, okay. You've got now, um, similar, I mean, overall similar, uh, hit points, but you've taken a lot more from he and him than he's taken from you. Um, as your turn again. Right, you adjusted the... Uh, hey, the I did. I added I, I added half of yours back, yeah. Okay, doing the uh, same routine of okay. the uh, reckless attack. And uh, I'm sorry, guys, this isn't that entertaining, uh, but... Oh, you're uh, good, man. You're good. I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. It is a straight one-on-one -on -one brawl. That's the idea. We get through it as quick as we can uh, to see who's the victor. Just 21? I can't tell. It doesn't tell me for some reason. Oh, you hit. Oh, I didn't select him. That's why. All right. I selected him this time for the other one. All right. Sorry about that, Joe. You got it. You got it. Go ahead and roll the damage. I'll, the I'll reduce the damage as it comes up. Six. Okay. So 12. Okay. I selected him for the other one. So if it does hit, then he will take that one instead oh, of... Oh, it's going to hit. No, it's gonna hit. It's gonna be a crit. Give me a crit. Yes. Take off his head. Oh. oh, that one missed. So you don't one. get advantage on the extra one. No. Uh, no. Got it's it. just a normal. One. It's just the first one. Okay. And I will end my turn since that is that. And he, at this point, again, does this kind of weird shuffle. Um, kind of circles a little bit to the north, as it were, uh, on the map. Um, just kind of moving around like he's definitely unsure. Uh, at this point, Dante and Fenton both step forward a little, but don't really take any actions. And uh, Barney and Clayton also step forward a little bit too. Like there's just this, this tension, this energy in the air that's pulling them forward yeah yeah and as they step forward here i'm going to just kind of like uh, put my hand on barney and like shift him over one square so he's lined up with the uh um with all sets contraption in case he fires it maybe <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be like I'm, gonna, I'm like I'm like oh did you see that here look over the here oh, over here old man here you go get, I, get a bit of you i am happy i, I give barney the look and there. i give him the nod yeah, yeah. buddy i'm happy to move him yeah. to to make that more accessible yeah, yeah. Exactly. okay and adam um, we'll attack Tusk again. It hit me twice and take my damage. All right, let's let's see. Yep, there's a hit. He's rolling chate damage, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, he's been great on hitting me, but yeah, thankfully so far. Con no. Consistently. Um, so that's thirteen. Um, we'll add that back. Uh, plus. All right, Tusk. And again, it's just this... Uh, now, Emmett's the only one staying kind of far enough away. He's standing over near where Alset is. Yeah, he's high off the weed. Yeah. Tusk is uh, bloody now since he's over half his hit points. He's going to stagger for a second and just be like, you are a great combatant. That sucks that things went this way. But you are threatening my friends. And I will not have that. And... Go back to my usual. Uh, <laughs> Go back to the usual. <laughs> <laughs> What's that called again? It's uh, called a reckless attack. So I will Super duper again. swingy swordy stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah, see, you shouldn't have gone back to the regular. You should have just kept yeah, it super heavy yeah. duty. Yeah, what are you doing? Let's see if you can pull it back and uh, try again with the normal attack. It's uh, advantage and swing. That'll That's hit. Better. Yep. Yep. Your epidermis is showing. <laughs> Adam, you need a wax, bro. <laughs> he is he is a bit hairy. Yeah. Um, all right. Is that yeah, that's the end of your turn, because it's my turn now. Um at this point he just lunges full on at you with um leading with the sword, but you can see his mouth is open and he's ready to just latch onto you as well so we're going to start with the sword you say he's lunging yeah 
I mean, he's already right next to you, but he's leading with his mouth behind the sword this time. Okay, because uh, I had danger sense, so I was kind of wondering if there's any way I could use his own momentum against him. Uh, I don't know. How would that work? Uh, just for uh, saving mm-hmm. throws with dexterity. Never mind. Oh, yeah, finally a good hit. All right. So let me um, take half that damage back. This is going to get down to the wire. I it guess. is. It is. Um, and then he's going to go ahead with the uh, a, a uh, straight-up b- bite. Oh, e oh. oh! So I rolled another one. He, he bites doesn't his tongue. Get, he doesn't get to bite you. E- you easily avoid his attack. And because of the ease at which you avoided his attack and his stumbling off balance... Um, I am going to give you advantage for this entire round. Oh, sweet. Mm. Uh, so I will not do reckless attack then, since it's uh, going to be advantage regardless, and uh, save him from having advantage on me. Mm. Let's get some crits for some crazy damage. Hopefully. Awesome. Yeah, it's still a hit. You hit? Yeah, yeah. So I will do normal on that. My lowest roll on damage so far. Uh, knock on some Eight. Again. Now what you got for the next one? Attack with advantage. Attack with advantage. I'm rolling now. Oh, uh, you son of a bitch. It was so You're close. just going to, you are drawing this out, damn it. And then I'm going to go and bite him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so All right. close. And, and I guess I have to hit the little button right here. And your turn. He um he tries to recover quickly, uh, swinging his long sword wildly at you. Um, a wildly in a good way for him at least. Apparently, <laughs> freaking damage. Son of a... That's been my savior. So. Um. All right. So one, and then the other. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, um, oh, the am... freaking damage rolls. Ah. Uh. I could have won this like ten minutes ago. <laughs> okay. By the luck of the Irish. All right. Uh, so I am going to once again reckless attack uh, this guy. Scimitar. I can't believe the freaking this damage guy. rolls. How many <laughs> ones did I have on the damage rolls? I Thank mean, you for setting that up for me, Joe. It really helped. Out. Almost all of them. Okay. So uh, let's do a normal attack. Three plus whatever. Okay. Nine. He looks so like he's dead. when that happens, there's the the high pitched squeal of an animal being put down. Can I make sure that it's at uh, zero for just a second, so I can flip a coin. Be like, oh, never mind. I don't want it. Never mind. No. <laughs> Forget I said anything. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. <laughs> um, so we got to start over because Randy hasn't was, said anything. It was funnier in my head. <laughs> <laughs> um. The, yeah, that high-pitched sound of an animal being put down, um, harshly in this case. Um, Dante and Fenton and Emmett, they all kind of perk up at what has happened, whereas Clayton and Barney are kind of like dumbfounded. Jaw yes, drop. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just grabbing Barney by the shoulders going, did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> so their, their jaws drop. Um and they're just kind of standing there like they're not sure what to do. Um, however, at that point, <clears throat> well, first off, I'm going to end the combat so we have some free movement here. Hey. But um, the they step forward, um, Fenton and Dante, reverently, mind you, there is no, you know, malice in, in their stepping forward. Emmett will join them and they all come up near you and they kind of take, a knee in front of you and they stare, they stare harshly at um, Clayton and Barney as if they must be joining in acknowledging their new leader. Um, also, we'll also stare harshly at Barney across from him with the, <laughs> with the harpoon. It, you see that, that nice little glimmer of the sun off of one edge of the harpoon as Barney <laughs> stares at it for a moment, a bead of sweat drops from his forehead <laughs> And Tusk. he steps he steps forward as well. Him and Clayton both step forward towards Tusk and take a knee 
in front of their new uh, pack leader. Leader of the pack. So now... Stand up, sailors. They do so. They obediently do what you tell them to do at this point. Whoever the best navigator is and sailor needs to get back on the wheel. And um, Barney nods and heads back over there, over to where they, you know, come command the boat from. We'll all meet back over there so he can hear as well. So we'll all just adjust, or, well, Tusk is going to walk over there. Probably everyone else follows, except for uh, Marty Alistair and Alcet. He doesn't control them. Yeah, I mean, gotta check out, gotta check out the captain's quarters now. Emmett, <laughs> Emmett goes back to his watch at the bow of the ship, and um, the others kind of like go back to work. It's like it's time to get back to work now. You that's when he gets out of uh, range. Kick the boss's like, ass. Ah, oh, that hurt so bad. <laughs> yeah, man, you got pretty brewed up. <laughs> Like, yeah, yes, Allie, where's Allie? Allie, are you, uh, Allie, maybe you might want to help. Uh... Question. When you have had invis- invisibility cast on you, can you actively, like, make yourself visible again, or do you have to wait for it to wear off? You take an action or, like, cast a spell or something, it goes yeah. away. If you go slap Marty, you become visible. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, I'm going <laughs> to sneak up behind Marty real quiet and just go, boo, and kind of shove him a little bit. <laughs> Yes, I turn around, I hellish rebuke her. Atomic wedgie. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Atomic wedgie. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. All right, Marty versus Alistair. Let's start up combat. Let's go. <laughs> Marty, what's your armor class? It's not good. Not good. <laughs> okay, but listen. With the way that I roll, you'd probably make it, friend. Potentially. Potentially. I think I took care of all the ones tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I took care of a couple of ones before he had it too. So. so just as a point of reference, by the way, he had 100 hit points to start in 18 armor class. <laughs> nice. And I start with 55 or some crap. Yeah, so. and a much lower armor class. That Your critical hit of 30 hit points was a big difference. Oh, yeah. That probably saved yeah. my, my <laughs> booty. Yeah. The pirate. So um, <clears throat> well, we can figure out the healing and what have you. Uh the, the short of it is, over the next couple of days, um, they will follow whatever Tusk tells them to do. Uh, there's Refund? an agreement that you are still headed towards Belshire. So they yes. continue to sail the boat out the river mouth to the ocean. Um, and the, the crew, again, following what Tusk tells them to do, even right up to the point where when Tusk tells them to end the episode, that they actually... End the episode. Dante, end yeah. the episode. <laughs> so they hoist the sail, and it just says end of the episode on the sail. Um, Underneath it says Crimin Minotaur, drink it. <laughs> they want to know, um, and this is something that, that you can think about, Randy, for next time, or, or the party can think about for next time, but um, presuming you're going to leave the boat, they're starting to ask you what's going to happen. When you leave, what's going to happen? Who's going to be in charge? What's going to go on? And you'll have to think about that. Maybe before, by the end of the journey, they'll want to know what's happening. Yeah, yeah we'll I talk th- over the next two weeks to figure out what uh, exactly. I say, I say we keep a boat of werewolf crew, man. Werewolf crew, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Come in handy. Yeah, it's good. Come in handy in a tight spot. That's going to be the home base, right? Your portable yeah. home base, just always sitting yeah. for you at port somewhere. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Well, we're going to wrap this one up it was a fun session tonight a lot of fun um fun, granted granted there was a bunch there with just um you know randy and and the uh the captain but nothing wrong with that nothing wrong i thought with that i thought it was pretty cool how everybody still had a part in it even if yeah, it no. wasn't a hugely active part so that i, was I really thought i was re-rolling characters tonight guys so, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you did good buddy no, we would have been fine. I, I, I got so much luck with my half uh, off the uh, damage and the bad rolls. So. Yeah, you did good. Thank you, Joe, for uh, failing your rolls on this. <laughs> You're welcome. It's the least I could do. Appreciate it. Appreciate <laughs> it. All right, all right. All right, guys. Well, again, we'll wrap this one up and we can all say uh, bye. Bye-bye. Ciao.
so, it's life for me. I think it's, I think it's really ended, but when I ended it last time, it cut it short. So I think I'm just going to let it run for a few minutes and uh, just let, gotcha. you know, let whatever be the end of it. Um, Ray Core just ain't what she used to be. Let me um, to... open up the YouTube page and see if it's actually caught up. That's probably a, a smart thing to do. Yeah, it might have been that. Um, no, not that. This... I'm going to step away, too, for about two minutes. I'll be right back. That's okay. What? Oh, I gotta change accounts if that's gonna work. How you guys doing? We're great, man. That's good, good. Good game, man. Good yeah. game. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Good game. I was hoping to harpoon somebody, but you know. That's why. That's why I moved. That's why I was moving the one guy in position. I'm like, oh, maybe we'll make an example of this one and just fire the harpoon. We'll make an example. Uh, Yeah. That was that was what's gonna happen. That's what I was hoping 